I'm just gonna start start it. What do you want to talk about? Oh shit! I gotta replace my bulbs. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. What do you want to talk about, man? Fuzzy handcuffs? I don't know. <laughs> Fuzzy handcuffs. Oh. <laughs> oh god. So I've not followed up on anything on the new Pokemon game. Have you? Oh yeah. I followed everything on the new Pokemon game. Oh really? Yeah. Like, what's your favorite part? What do you want to know? I, I know the general gist of like the the original Pokemon, but like the Kanto 151. I like, know those ones, but I know like the three stars they had coming out. One of them's just no one's gonna use. Which that, one? I think that's like the grass type, or whichever oh, the, one looks the weirdest. The, you mean the monkey? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's Grookey. That's uh um, I actually a lot of people seem to like Grookey. Um, like that's what I've noticed. It's like a cute monkey thing. I don't know. His, his evolved forms are kind of weird. Oh yeah, I did make a commentary about that, but that's not official news. That's just like a fan speculation, or that's th- of it being a leak, maybe. Didn't they already do like a monkey type Pokemon like for a starter? I think it was like the second or third generation. Um, the fire type, I think. Are you talking about um, uh, Chimchar? Chimchar, there you go. Yeah, Chimchar. That's fourth gen. <clears throat> fourth that's, gen. That's from the Sinnoh region. Yeah, I've yeah. only played the first games, so. Yeah, no, yeah. Gold and silver. Gold, silver. I own. I have red, blue, and yellow. You should play Heart Gold and Soul Silver. That was really good. I poured in a lot of time into that, and the Pokemon actually follow you. I was looking outside at- of the Pokeball. I was actually looking at buying a DS, but I'm like on eBay, and I'm like, yeah. Too much? Yeah, I mean, they're going for like 150 160 bucks, yeah. 100 200 bucks. It's because, uh, well, actually, if you get like a DSi, or like one of the shittier Nintendo DSs, they're probably less money, because the original D- Nintendo DS, the brick, those are really fucking good, solely because... Um, they're indestructible. They're indestructible. That's one thing. And the other thing is that... Um, if you want to transfer Pokemon from Ruby Sapphire, Fire Red, and Leaf Green to your fourth gen games, you can do that so much easier. For some reason, they thought, you know, wouldn't it be a good idea to engineer uh, the the same annoying uh, cartridge hanging out of the Game Boy Advance into the nin- Nintendo DS? Like the cartridge for the GBA hung yeah, it was out. Awesome. Of, well. Well, well, it, it was. stuck out of the advance, and it stuck out. Of, I don't think you could. You, the only uh, system but, you could use it for was the advance and the SP. You couldn't yeah. use it for the DS. The, then the DS would allow the, the, the newer the, DS. It hung out a little bit. Yeah. Not the original DS though. It actually slid in all. Yeah, the that's way. for the advanced games. But yeah. for like uh, Game Boy Color games, they worked in the advanced SP. Is that the small one? The SP? The one that flipped up like a flip Yeah, phone? yeah, that's the SP in the advance. But it didn't I don't think it I don't think it worked for the Game Boy Micro. No, Micro was too small. I don't want to use advanced games. And I think that's what started it going into DS. Because yeah. I don't think you could use color on DS. Nope. Not at all. You could, but the thing was with the DSI or like the future generations of the N- Nintendo DS. Uh, the Game Boy Advance cartridge hung out just a little bit, just like the Game Boy I think Color. I heard somebody did. talking about that. It may have been you. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, like you remember? Oh no, what? I remember. Like the original one, it was flush. And the newer one, yeah. the newer one was like a little bit off, and, it, every, and everybody was freaking out about yeah. it. Yeah, Mario had one. Oh really? Yeah, because he wanted to be all fancy. He's just like, oh, I got the new DS. Look at me, and I'm just like, that's stupid. <laughs> I remember we were like. <laughs> what were we like in fifth grade? Or yeah, I, like still did, sixth, I still had the advance. Grade? I still had the advance. Yeah. I still have mine. Mine has tons of scratches in it because I was an irresponsible child. Yeah, I have, I have mine. I have my color still. Uh, a friend of mine, I think, took my SP and I loaned my Game Boy Color to another friend. Never got that back, so... Bastard. Yeah. it's uh Can't trust anybody with your electronics, that's for sure. So is the new Pokemon game going to be on DS or is it going to be on the Switch? It's on the, it's on the Switch. Bastards. They want you to spend more yep. money. Got to go. I thought they would have done that. Because well, they already someone... did that with uh, Pokemon Let's Go. With Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. Uh, That's for the Switch. Why do they keep on trying to force Pikachu down your throat? Or not Pikachu, Eevee. You're like, Eevee's here cute. you go. Have another second. Have another yeah. main character. <laughs> I'm just going to yeah. put him out there. Just don't worry about it. Just, just keep used to him. Funny thing, though, is that they tried doing that with Clefairy. 
Clefairy was going to be the original Pokemon for exactly. instead of Pikachu. I know that for exactly. a fact. Exactly. Clefairy was actually like the um I I think one of the original like designers for the concept art for all the different Pokemon, like the main concept artist really wanted Clefairy to be the mascot. But they're like, nope, we're going to pick Pikachu because I think Pikachu more represents, like, Pokemon as a whole. Or it was cuter or something yeah. like that. But the I feel like the person who designed Clefairy is still stuck in their ways and might be a little delusional on the fact that Clefairy is just... Or biased, maybe, yeah. I, on the fact that Clefairy is adorable. Because I, I think Clefairy is just a gross-looking... Fairy looking, alien looking thing. I mean, it's better than a go or was it the the bats. That Zubat. Zubat. Still or better Zubat? than yeah. Could you imagine Zubat as being a starter Pokemon? I could. Maybe like if they made like an offshoot Team Rocket game. That'd be pretty cool. That would be cool. Yeah, an offshoot Team Rocket game. You either choose uh, uh, Ekans, Coughing, or Zubat, or some something like that, or Rattata, or Rattata. I don't S- know. Snake and then Cobra. Yeah. The name is backwards. I oh yeah, that was pretty cool. <laughs> and then you got to look at Muck, and it's like, no. Oh, that's gross. <laughs> what, what's Muck spelt backwards, kids? I don't know. <laughs> I just don't know how to read. I, I yeah, I can't read. And most of my Pokemon recently I've been watching is from Max Mofo. Pokemon. Oh yeah. Who yeah. who is that? Uh, you know, like the uh, like iDubs TV. You had him. You had Filthy Frank. Okay. And he had uh, anything for views, but he wasn't really involved. And he had, like, how do basics basically through the eggs and stuff. Oh, nice. Uh, but they used to be conglomerated together, and then Max used to do, like, Pokemon on the side. And then he stopped adding to his main channel. Now he just puts Pokemon videos out there. Oh, I didn't know He shows off that. his hoard of collection of Pokemon cards, Pokemon anything. He buys pretty much out the whole Pokemon store, or the Pokemon... Uh, yeah, what just, are they called? The Pokemon, the Pokemon Centers. Oh, Pokemon Center. He buys Center. out to the whole oh, Pokemon Jesus. Center of anything new that they wow. have. I remember going there as a kid, um, and, like, I was... I didn't understand how, like, the mystery gift system worked in, like, uh, um, like for Fire Red and Leaf Green. You had to actually physically go to the Pokemon Center to get, like, your... your mystery gift for the the key to destiny deoxys you know like that that extra side quest in pokemon fire red and leaf green and uh you know i was expecting that as a kid though but it was only during a window of a certain time so the minute we went there i was just like oh man i'm gonna get you know something cool i'm gonna get deoxys that's gonna be sweet so i got a mystery gift it wound up being an egg and i think it just hatched into an execute and I was like, yeah. <laughs> no, this is like the real life Pokemon centers in Japan. Yeah, no, I went to the one in Rockefeller Center. Wait, they had one in Rockefeller Center. Yeah, you were, actually, I think you were at the same field trip, fifth grade. Yeah, fifth grade. Yeah. Damn it, I missed that. I went to Rockefeller Center, and I got the uh, mystery gift. I would love to work there, you know, it but I, I don't know. With anything. Yeah, I'd probably live in my yeah, car. Yeah, you're probably living in your car because you buy everything there. You had to buy a bigger car every other week. Yeah. I, it, you need to have another trailer. <laughs> <laughs> my van will be decked out looking like Pikachu <laughs> with the ears. <laughs> I'd like to go to them, but it's like I, whenever I buy something, it's way too expensive. Anything yeah. with Pokemon on it's way too expensive. Pokemon cards. I, I, don't, I still don't know how to play the game. I don't think any – I think only a couple people know how to play. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there's secret. like one – they're keeping it a secret. It's in the Vatican archives, and yeah, they just <laughs> it's being just, it's being looked at by top men. Oh yeah, it's on the emerald tablets. Yeah, it's right next the to the Ark scribes. of the Covenant. Co- right next to the Ark of Co- the Ark of the Covenant. It's in unknown lettering. Yeah. So you need fancy archaeologists to like from Pokemon Three the movie. Yeah. To just <laughs> Mewtwo is a dick in that movie. He wasn't in Pokemon. No, 3. it was Pokemon One, wasn't it? You talk, yeah. You're talking about the first movie. He was a dick. Um, you know, I understand his um, his angst towards people. Well, I could see that too. You could actually relate it to you, you uh, watch the... all your friends getting fighting each other to death. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> it's for fun. For oh, did money. you see the new one? No, the new version of uh, Mewtwo Strikes Back. It's like this weird looking. 3D esque, like it, it's like a, um, 
I don't know. It just looks like it just looks like a stop motion animation almost, and it looks gross. It looks like a movie that was produced in Kenya, or like no, no, no. It looks, or it looks someplace good. Like that. It looks good. Afghani animation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's three D, fully rendered, vivid looking three D rendering animation and all that goodness. But it's just looks. You have to see it. It just looks weird, man. I'll probably have to watch Pokemon the Pokemon Detective Pikachu movie tonight. Oh, okay. I've never seen it yet. Do you have it like bootlegged? I can, I can, yeah, I could probably get you it bootlegged. You can find it. Yeah, you can. I mean, it. anything not big, you can get it bootlegged. I mean, yeah, anything. definitely. Within the first week, a friend of mine got uh, Infinity Wars. You know, really? but of course it was like Chinese subtitles. You know? <laughs> and I hate that. It's always yeah. annoying. Or there's like one person in the background just keeps coughing. <coughs> like halfway through like the main speeches and stuff. And it's like, are you kidding me? Yeah, I couldn't. That's why I just wait for it. I bite the bullet, spend the couple dollars for at Redbox whenever I can. Yeah, I mean, I bought a movie from Redbox for like six bucks. I bought uh, Spider-Man Enter the Spider-Verse. How was that? Amazing. I got to drop it off so you can watch it. Cool. It was unbelievable. The uh, the, the animation in it, it's, ju- it's, it's very unique. Very unique, and the animation was just out of this world. I mean, like there's nothing like that. That was probably my favorite movie that year, I mean, other than like uh, uh, Bohemian Rhapsody. I still gotta go. Yeah, watch. that was pretty good. Um, still gotta watch Rocket Man. You know the um, that's the biggest thing with gaming, where the expectations always. You need to have this like realistic, hundred percent HD, almost like real life graphics, and that's been like the the staple for for uh, consoles like Xbox or, you know, the PlayStation. But with Nintendo, it's always been like unique animations and you know uh, more cartoony. Yeah, more cartoony, but unique art styles nonetheless. They have the technological technological capabilities of uh, having realistic type games, but they choose not to. Solely because it's been done before. They got that. You know, they're trying yeah. to be like somebody different. And it's. I feel like that a lot of PC gamers, a lot of uh, Xbox, PlayStation type of gamers don't really think of Nintendo as an equal solely because they don't go for that type of animation style. Like a video game like Octopath Traveler has like that low res uh, retro JRPG type of thing you know kind of like the older final fantasy yeah. games you know and and it's just it's not it, it shouldn't just be looked at for the art style it should just be looked at for uh the storyline and also the aesthetic that they're trying to go for you know to yeah. so that the uh player can actually imagine themselves in a world that's a bit different what's your opinion on game remakes game remakes like if they re- um, like if they remade like you know they made it, redid COD they did everything else like for like just bringing it up to the next console, I mean I don't like paying sixty bucks for it but I'll pay like thirty bucks for it. Yeah, I mean it's like if I already own the game I don't want to pay the whole sixty buck price tag again because that's like I'm buying the same dang game again. It's there's no added content. Right. Yeah. But like there's some just... games out there that need to be remade like Chrono Trigger. And there's a oh, whole cool. bunch of other ones. I mean, I can't get Chrono Trigger because I can't play it unless I want to emulate it on my laptop. I mean, why don't you just emulate it? <sighs> I gotta find a file. I gotta find a That's Notori true, yeah. website. You know, there's probably a way to get it on the Switch as like a download. I mean, they should. They do that like that for a lot of their um for a lot of Nintendo's uh like the E3 Nintendo Direct 2019 event they. They uh, teased a bunch of retro games, like uh, I believe Castlevania was one of them. Yeah. Uh, Dragon Quest, I believe you could get their whole uh, library, you know, at the Nintendo eShop. I forget when that is or if it's already out. It's but... probably already out because they already closed yeah. the eShop down. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, that closed oh, like Jesus. back in uh, February or like maybe August of last God year. Damn it. That was like what my mom used for Netflix for like the past three years really yeah it's just the Wii I don't even know what I mean, to do with it I you can still get anymore. on the store but you just can't update Netflix that sucks man <laughs> yeah but Netflix is gonna be so out of date I can't watch anything on it you know you look at any of these other, I, I don't have any confidence in any game developers anymore after you what don't. Bethesda did all of them are pushing for mobile games nobody wants mobile games I mean if you're a real gamer you're not gonna be mobile gaming 
You know, there's um, and this might come off as well. The thing is, is it, just the demographics. They're trying to incorporate everybody. Yeah. Into uh, the whole uh, um, into the whole gaming universe, and you know, statistically, a lot more men do uh, um, like a uh, uh, more story based games or more in. Uh, they want to be immersed yeah. into a universe and where more women are games are the hyper casual games. Hyper casual yeah. games like the like the regular things like like Doodle bubble Trump. shoot yeah, yeah bubble shooter nine thousand or whatever, you know. And, and that's not like knocking their um, interest. You I know, mean, everybody's for, interested in different things. I mean, you're more interested in that. I'm more interested in like Fallout. But look at Bethesda screwed over Fallout seventy six. Yeah, that game was a dumpster fire, and I'm glad I didn't pre order it when I bought picked up. Uh, uh, Red Dead Redemption Two. Red Dead Redemption Two. They kind of screwed up on the multiplayer, like real bad. Real, I didn't real, even know they had multiplayer. Real, real, real bad. I mean, I played it for like three days. I got bored because all it was was Grand Theft Auto Online, but more expensive. Okay. To buy a gun, you had to pay like real money to get it, or you had to grind for like ninety six hours just to get a gun. Ugh, that's awful. Yeah, and any other like the upgrades in there, we did, they did it horribly. I mean, I don't have time for that kind of stuff either. I know? mean, I'd rather. Buy, I remember back in the day when you had to buy DLC, Grand Theft Auto Four, uh, Halo Two actually had DLC that I just saw the Halo Two expansion disc. Really? Uh, Halo Three, you had to pay oh, for the expansion. Oh, they came in like physical copies. Yeah, I mean, I actually, oh, the okay. Halo Two actually it was a physical copy. Halo Three, maybe. But Halo 2 definitely was an ex- uh, expandable copy. See, my biggest issue with DLC is, like, if you're going to make a game, it should just be the full game. I could agree with that, but sometimes, like, DLC, like, if you look at, have you ever played Red Dead Redemption 2? I haven't. I mean, there's a DLC in the game where they change the whole game around. Oh, okay. So, instead of it being, uh, like, normal day in life, and the, uh, the back then it was a um, zombie apocalypse. Why not it just make it a sequel? the whole game. Why? I mean, why would you want to charge more than 20 bucks? That was back when oh, Rockstar was wasn't money bucks. hungry. Okay. As soon as the... When, as soon as, like, Rockstar game... Or Grand Theft Auto Online hit out, uh-huh. money hungry, money hungry, money hungry. They're just beating into the ground. It's like, I'd rather pay... I buy the game, more DLC comes out, I'd rather pay the 40 bucks for the season pass and not yeah. have to deal with buying money just to be able to survive in the game without people that actually have money spending it and start killing me. Because this yeah. gets ridiculous, and it's, it's like, I don't like that. You if know I'm, what it is, though? It's it's like, um, I think the issue is uh, now that they've built up, you know, they they built their company up so much, there's, there's so many office buildings and, and, and other office jobs that need to be covered in order to cover yeah, legal fees, in order to cover payroll. then again, you're going to shoot yourself in the foot. What happens yeah. when all the gamers leave because they don't want to put up with your garbage? Loot boxes, this, that, whatever. You, I don't want to pay for that. I don't want to have to go online and get killed by the same guy 1,600 times because he can buy, pay for a $60 or $50 like attack vehicle on Grand Theft Auto. I don't want to do that. I'm just going to turn yeah. off the game and go play something else. Yeah, and that that's why I have a, the best um, hopes for indie games yes. swooping in and just, you know, I mean, video I mean, it games. Was the, it was the indie games back in the early 90s, too. Yeah. I mean, you got Rampage. Rampage was an indie game. Chrono Trigger was somewhat of an indie game. Well, I mean, just the, the teams were smaller. It was like eight people. Uh, like the first Super Mario Brothers, it was just eight people. on uh, the... the staff for, like, uh, one of my favorite games out there was uh, Saints Row 2 favorite game out there yeah maybe on the staff maybe there was about 30 or 40 people and that's small that was kind of yeah, big that's back considered then small but like nowadays they have like 600 800 1500 people on there and it's, it's like it's like a huge full length movie and i'm just getting tired of it i'm like I'm, i don't like paying for everything i mean if i buy a 60 dollar game on my 300 say 300 dollar game system or if you have a pc on your 1500 dollar pc you're paying for a 60 dollar game I expect to be able to play my game with no saying, hey, give me your money for five bucks so you can get this part of the game. Yeah. I don't like that. I mean, if you're going to honestly do that, make a different game. Yeah, Sell it also that's a true. sequel. Make a sequel. I, f- I have a feeling, I, speaking of which, actually, the, you know, Breath of the Wild? Yeah, the, I mean, the yeah, new... I know roughly. I don't really play much with Nintendo. 
there was a lot of uh, DLC stuff that there was a lot of storyline that they wanted to add, and so they had it in like three different DLC packs. And then after a while, they realized, you know, we have so many ideas. Let's make another game. And now there's uh, in that Nintendo Direct E3 2019, they announced um, a uh, what is it? They they announced a sequel for Breath of the Wild. And it looks awesome. And yeah, it's like, why it. don't other games do that? You know, I mean, like you have so much extra content. Why don't you just say, man, why am I make another game? Exactly. On the same, I, I, Saints Row was an like, active. It was run by Activision in the beginning, and then it, yeah. like, and they run into some financial issues after after Saints Row Two. It was awesome. I mean, they were getting yelled at for being a Grand Theft Auto clone. Oh really? It was, you were there. Were, I you remember were a, that. You were in a gang. There's three other gangs that you had to fight. And a corporation. Once you fight that, you own the whole city. Saints Row 2 or 3 made it a little bit more ridiculous. I'm going to ruin it with all the spoilers, but it's been out there for a while. I'm so. not going to play the... I'm not going to play it. <laughs> yeah. Just because I remember I was like, are there cheat codes for that? Yeah, a little bit here and there. Yeah, it was like with a cell phone, I think, last mm-hmm. I recall. Are you punching like a cell phone? Yeah, there's some cheat, there was cheat codes in the second one, I believe. I believe there was. I remember that that must have been like a decade ago when I saw something like that. Yeah, I mean there was also in Grand Theft Auto Four too, in single player. Yeah, there was cheat codes, but uh, after Saints Row Two, Saints Row Three brought it. They wanted to get out a little bit from like the, they wanted to get like goofiness, and oh, then okay. Four was way too goofy. I mean you talk about like going from Mickey Mouse to actual goofy, really, on not, not and it too... just ruined the whole series. And they made an expansion pack. Failed. Oh, that's th- it. That failed sucks, completely. man. I mean, they made it another game out of it. But three, four, and the expansion were all in the same engine. Oh, they the didn't same update exact, it? same exact map, same exact engine. They didn't upgrade anything. What were they doing? Pocketing the money, and now look at their company. It failed. They're pretty much going out of yeah. business. I mean, you do stupid stuff like that, like dishonoring, like the whole gaming industry. It's like Bethesda's going to have to do a lot to get the Fallout 7, the people that believe in the Fallout back. And they're like, oh, we're going to make Fallout Mobile or this Fallout this or something like that. Anything mobile to actual gamers is going to push you off the cliff because they're just not going to trust you. I mean, how can you go, like, how can I have you go from enjoying it on like a nice afternoon to enjoying it on like a little five by six screen? If it was VR. VR, I mean, that's one thing. That's if it something. Was VR, port- yeah. They want mobile because portability. They want anybody to play it. They don't want to have to be tied down for someone buying an Xbox, PlayStation, PC, this, that, whatever. They want everybody to afford it or everybody to buy it. Um. Well, actually, uh, that makes me think. You know, the whole uh, um, invention, uh, the the intuitiveness that Nintendo's about. You know how like the Switch is about that docking thing. Yeah. And, you know, you pull out the Joy-Cons and then put them into your yeah. con- controller. You know, what if... Um, that makes were, sense. It'd be cool to have something like that for a cell phone. I think they used to have them. That would be pretty... Like a dockable cell phone? That but then again, it wouldn't be fitting in your pocket. Most people want something to fit in their pocket or their purse. I mean, that yeah. would be ideal. I mean, that's like a small computer. That's the thing, like, your computer right there. That's about the same size. My cell phone that I have right now is probably more um, technical technically powerful than the laptop we're using right now your smartphone right now is like seven or eight times more powerful than the plane or the spaceship that brought the astronauts to the moon exactly you know like my laptop is like 10 years old at least but yeah the, it's 10 years old but the thing is you know what they do same thing with phones and apple actually got caught doing this is the updates they have slow down the older phones they notice the operating exactly. system and they say oh we might not be compatible with it we'll make it slowing down my phone sometimes goes through like uh, me- me- mental breakdowns. Like it'll just start freaking out, freezes, shuts down, yeah. apps crash all the time. And yeah. mine's only like a four-year-old phone, five-year-old phone, eh, four. I feel like it could last ten years. You know, if but why would they want to do that? I mean, like same exactly. thing with cars. Cars, you honestly, you can make a car have a hundred miles per gallon because so, we could put a man on the moon. We can do all this stem cell research. We can go all this cancer and, uh, research. We can find a cure for almost any uh, uncurable disease out there, but we can't figure out a, like a pickup truck or a Jeep or something like that that can't get any, 
we can't figure out why we can't get above 50 miles per gallon in every single vehicle. Yeah. And, and you know, there's probably a cure for like aging that's out there somewhere. You heard about I mean, the yeah, you heard about the whole thing with uh, Elon Musk making electric cars, right? What about it? They, we actually there was actually electric cars in the early 2000s. Oh yeah. Uh, it was like the that was a doc- something. There's and a documentary about it. Yeah, I saw that. It was really cool. And Who I looked killed the on electric it. car? Yeah, I mean, they people were liking them. People were leasing them. They were buying them, or they yeah. wanted to buy them. They wanted to buy out the lease, and the company's like, "No, we can't. We can't sell them to you." And they immediately took them, brought them to a junkyard, and wrecked them. Yeah, they bought all. They scooped up all the blueprints, all the patents. Yep. There's actually stories online on YouTube. I believe it was of, of people talking about men in black showing up to their houses taking their car, taking their blueprints, and just saying, you like your freedom, you better not do this again, or don't talk I about this Elon again. I Elon Musk was too big for them. Yeah, I, th- I feel I like... I with um, the social media nowadays, you can't really get away with that shit. Because as soon as you do something like that, it's going to be immediately put put on Facebook Live, or YouTube, uh, YouTube live stream, or Twitch, or anything like that, and it's going to be out there immediately as soon as something happens like that. Well, what scares me is that YouTube and places like youtube or facebook or any of these giant groups are bought and if if there's anything indicating some kind of a leak you know that's going to be censored immediately Why would or it be? shadow banned i mean if you because have, have if the you have the to. only if you have the only uh story on something like the only lead the only video on it mm-hmm. you know how much traffic's going to be going to your website a lot put ads on bit. it you know how much money you're making and Google a ads lot. and stuff. Yeah, you're making a lot of money. And, I mean, some of these places, like, I don't like Facebook because they, like, people are always narking on you for posting stupid memes. Like, I post a lot of junk memes, like dirty memes. But yeah, it's pretty bad. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty like, bad yeah. stuff, but people pretty always raunchy. come in once in a while and report people, and it's like, really? I mean, just do it like you used to do in the back in the days. If you don't like something, walk away. Don't pay attention yeah. to it. Don't don't make it your main point of focus. There was somebody that... uh um actually like called somebody or or like there it was like some facebook debate about like trump or something and like he called her uh this lady a cunt and like that lady uh went to his facebook found out where he worked called his boss and and he was on like a couple weeks like uh, watch or probation or whatever from the company. I mean, like he couldn't work for that company. I mean, that's bullshit. I mean, that is pretty bad. I mean, that you get to the point where it's like, yeah, fuck that. But yeah, I mean, you can, you can ruin someone's life by doing that. And even with, even with false allegations nowadays, you could ruin someone's life with harassment and all that stuff. The problem is Definitely. if you do that stuff and you get caught, you're screwed. Because they can counter sue you, and you can be in you can be in debt until your uh, grandkids are at ready to retire. I mean, your whole family could be at running out of money. Because not only do when you die, your debt doesn't disappear. Your kids take that debt. Wow. So if you get sued for a hundred million dollars and you can't, you only pay off like twenty five million of it. Your kids acquire that debt. If uh, that comes out of your estate, I believe it comes out of your estate. Okay. But. So- you could sell the house and yeah, I mean you won't you know, get anything in inheritance, but then again, it's like you're not in debt to whatever they bought on. Yeah, I but guess. it's like yeah. some of these people. It's like I just want to find out where they live and just punch them in the face. It's like stop it. You're ruining everything. What? I mean, if like somebody has an opinion, like if I like if you had said something about like the police being bad and I called up your company, probably wouldn't be doing anything. But if I started calling out like somebody on the street saying this guy is a piece of jerk and that stuff, and I called him out and they reported me, I might get in trouble. I mean, it's all this double standard stuff. Yeah. And, and it it in a way it in, influences people or or it coax people to uh, um, adapt. But it's getting... not not turning the other cheek. You know, like so, something that Americans value. You know, the whole Christian values of you know, live, uh, um, stand above the situation, um, you know, and turn the other cheek and just rise above it. You're getting to the point where you're so PC, nothing's explainable. So we're getting back to the fifties on, we can't explain sex to kids because we're worried about we're going to offend them. It's going to get to the point where we backtrack. We Mm -hmm. go past where we've already passed, went through. 
like we've went through with uh, talking sex or talking about sex ed in schools. Yeah. At what point do we figure out it's too much of a controversial issue to talk about it? Then and just not talk about it anymore, and we go back to being back in the six or the eighties and seventies where everybody's having unprotected sex and nobody knows what's going on. Yeah, and there's no there's not a conversation about it. Yeah. You know, um, something that I see though is uh, as far as what I've seen in like a, a university college university setting is that um, you know the it, it seems as though maturity doesn't really reach like kids don't reach a level of maturity until like maybe like a mid-20s or something like that whereas kids like 20 30 years ago um reached that level of maturity within high school yeah i mean like in high school they treated us like middle schoolers still it kind of felt like they treated us like middle yeah, schoolers definitely and i don't think it, i'm not blaming all this on like on our generation on just the schools on itself it's all of ourselves too i mean we didn't go th- forward and push forward for it but i mean like in high yeah, but it's in not college, like we're gonna we, organize and like but all these videos online of college people like being act, acting in tamper tantrums i'm like this is just ridiculous i mean like someone has free speech to talk about trump maybe not people much people like trump i voted for him just for simple fact that in new york no matter who uh you vote for a democrat will win yeah it doesn't matter i, I, really I voted for matter. just to prove a point and yeah. most people always are upset, like, why'd you vote for him? I'm like, you didn't even vote. So it's like you got to get out there and support who you want to vote for. Uh, go and uh, walk out and do events for him. It's like volunteer for going door to door and talking about this, uh, the person you like. But yeah. the thing is, in schools, it's like I saw there was one video of uh, somebody had a sign that said, Tr- uh, Trump's not that bad. Somebody takes the sign, runs off with it, and then refuses to give it back to the guy after police tell her to give it back. And uh, she, I believe she did some damage to the sign after like hitting it or hitting, doing something with it. And the guy was asked, if you want to press charges? He said yes. And then she blew a temper tantrum when she was get, trying to get arrested. And I believe Jesus. it's like nowadays, it's like the thing with police, it's like everybody's filming you. No one's going to be want to be cops. So in the next 20 years, you're not going to have any cops out there. Albany, everybody around us is saying, we can't have cops. Or we're having a hard time getting... It's too crazy. Because, I mean, why would you want to get paid 40 grand a year? To be to a be, babysitter. Uh, be, be a babysitter, get scrutinized all day, be called a piece of garbage, and be worried for your uh, life because everybody wants to kill you. I mean, yeah. there. I mean, you have a likely. Ch- I'd rather be in the army than be a police officer right now. I mean, I had some chance. I wanted to be one for a little bit, but then again, it's like it's not worth it. It's not yeah. worth the paycheck. It's not worth saving people that aren't grateful. You know, you yeah, want I mean, you want some gratitude for your efforts, and that that's the thing though. It's like a it's like being a parent because it's a thankless job. You know, I mean, here you don't want to be thanked, but you also don't want to be scrutinized for doing your actual exactly. job. Exactly. It's like. Yeah. If you're a teacher and you teach kids, you don't get scrutinized for it. I mean, you might get scrutinized the way you teach them, but that's not a scrutiny. If you do your job and pull somebody over and he pulls a gun on you and shoot him, you're going to get scrutinized for no matter what. No matter if he's white, black, Asian, Filipino, anything, anything. You know what the problem is, I think, for the, for the most part when it comes to, you know, a, it's, you know, like what we talked about, it's maturity level. B, it's, um, you know, just... Being responsible ki- well, for your kids, actions, too. Nobody's told about the what, what cops have to look for, how they're trained. You know, it's like you need to have your hands on the wheel shown, like, that you don't have a weapon on you. I do that all the time. I Whenever I get pulled Nobody, over... That's I, not common knowledge, I mean, though. that should be common knowledge in uh, driving schools. I mean, that should be common law is when you get pulled over, all the windows go down, all the interior lights go on, hands on the top of the yeah. uh, top of the steering wheel. Because no matter what, if you do that and you say, I'm reaching for my wallet, it's in my right pocket, the cop's going to be more lenient on you and probably not even give you a ticket. Right. I mean, most of the time, if you're being a jerk about it, he's going to screw up your day, and he doesn't care because you just made his day a lot worse. So why does he not make your day a lot worse by giving you a ticket? Right. But if you're respectable, if you're respectful... Uh, very kind to them, saying yes sir, yes ma'am, treating them like a, little, a human being. Yeah, you're exactly. gonna get a, you're gonna be a lot easier off. 
And I think that's that's the disconnect where it's a huge disconnect. I mean, people are always like shoving their phones in the cap's faces, and that's one of the most disrespectful things I can ever see in the emergency medical or the emergency services is people on their phones when they could be helping out or calling nine one one. I saw there was one article where a guy was burning to death in a, or a uh, guy was burning to death in a car, and a woman was walking by with a camera videotaping while a tro- uh, state trooper was trying to put water and try to save the guy's life, and everybody else was videotaping it. Wow. And it's like, what, what point do we lose humanity and all just about social media and likes and retweets? This is when we start serving the technology. Like, yeah, it's AI soon, isn't going to be for us. Terminator's AI is coming soon, man. Pretty sure. Got to find Jesus. John Carter, man. You got to protect him. God damn it. But, yeah, it's it's getting bad with all the technology and people being addicted to it. I mean, you see how many people texting and driving? Oh, yeah, it's 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 bad. And, and hopefully it'll get we'll get to a point where, like, cars can drive for us. But even then, I'm still hesitant with, you know. I want know. to see what happens in the snow. <laughs> oh, really? I want to take one of these. Uh, I want to take one of these Tesla vehicles and put it in snow and put it in a parking lot and see how it well, do, well, well it does. Or one of these driving courses. See how well it doesn't snow, because I have no idea. No one said anything about driving in snow. They said about rain. Rain's a little bit difficult, but it's doable. It's snow is difficult because it covers up the white lines. So I'm wondering how that's not going to work. I mean, you're going to have to figure out trackers on the sides of roads, like on the mile po- mo- markers. Yeah, you're gonna also gonna have to, fig- but then again, you're gonna have to have se- uh, seg- or is it separated highways and stuff. I mean, you might work it on the highway, but you're not gonna know whose lane's what. Yeah, so it might be a big like Californian type of way of driving. You or know, what you could do is you could there. put like uh, again, you could probably put sensors in like underneath the pavement, sensors, yeah, or sensors underneath the pavement, like RID- RFID trips or something like that. Yeah, because they're cheap enough. Underneath it. And when your car drives over, it registers that you're in the straight line, and you can pick it up in the front of your vehicle while you're driving, and go to that same point. That's just so much maintenance. It's so much. It's so much maintenance. It's so much like we're still like 20 years out from that. Like we're talking about like rubble, you know, like and and just paving all the streets for for. You can't afford it. It's, it's no that's no. already expensive. The infrastructure's already crumbling. You know why? You know why it's so expensive? All these new rules, all these new regulations, regulations you have to do yeah. it. You have to get a soil sample for every six feet of like ground you have to pull up. You have to get a soil sample here. You have to get a soil sample here. You can't build there because that's a wetland. You can't put actual dirt in there to get rid of the water because somebody's going to get upset. I mean, we're getting to the point where everybody's upset about everything. It's going to be hard as a country to even move forward. Well, the, the thing about um, – I understand that argument, though, to a point – because they're, you want the environment too. Yeah, it's you know the ba- a balanced ecosystem, a healthy ecosystem is going to uh, prolong the lives of you know certain species of butterflies and flowers and bees, which are the real um, you know uh, I guess pollinate. Well, I mean, just just the symbiosis that they yeah. have for our for our ecosystem is the main reason why we have uh, we have to like maintain certain certain uh ecosystems willingly you know uh, um you know like this type of butterfly in our area where there has to be controlled fires yeah it's oh, it's for the all, ecosystem it's, it's all for one butterfly that can have it's, it's also for the ecosystem itself i mean if you got rid of that you'd have to get rid of the whole ecosystem because if you had a fire it'd be like california burning yeah and we don't want that because california why it's be burns controlled. like a son of a gun they burn real yeah, bad, real fires. hot. And the thing is, you can't even do control burns out there. I mean, if you did, it would be impossible. It's too dry. Because it's too dry. It's too dry. The wind's too well. You haven't kept up on this for years. And by the time you start trying to do it, you're going to burn half the state. You also have people moving the, out into the middle of nowhere, in middle of fire-prone areas, and wondering why their houses burned. I mean, there's ways to get around this. Uh, I saw a couple articles a couple years ago where it said if you uh, get rid of all of, you know, it's in fire season, kill your lawn. No matter what, kill your lawn, turn it into dirt. Uh, yeah. Get rid of all, like, the shrubs. Get all rid of all the, any foliage around your house. What's... And put a water tank on your property far enough away, like a pool or a pond or something like that, filled mm-hmm. with water. 
and you put sprinklers on your house. I mean, there's preparations for people to save their house. And if you do those preparations, the fire department's more likely to save your house to get a foothold on this fire than anything. If they have enough what, the water to fight it, something that they can actually obtain rather than just losing a house because you want to live in the middle of the woods and you want trees around your house. I mean, especially in like Long Island when they had the floods. They, the only guy, one person that had his house saved in this whole neighborhood was the guy who built his house on st- uh, on like platforms, on stilts. Oh, okay. And all of his neighbors were yelling at him for years and years and years. You're stupid. You're stupid. Your house looks like trash. Oh, it looks and he's like the only, stuff. His, his house is the only one still standing. Good. Or the only house that wasn't flooded. And he's like, what do you expect? Yeah, I mean, you got to be, you got to prepare for your environment you're in. Exactly. But that's, that's awesome. That Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. like the biggest middle finger to that other family. Yeah, no, like, seriously. Screw yeah. you. I li- outlived you, bitch. But. Eh. What's your take on uh, the CEO of Nestle? I have not heard anything about that. He said something about um, he believes that water should be bottled. Like all water should be bottled bottled and sold. Oh, he's just wanting money. Yeah. And actually he's, um, I believe, I don't know if it was Nestle or it was another water bottling company. They took the water from Flint, Michigan, the lead poisoned water. And they're purifying it themselves and rebottling it and selling it back to them. <laughs> Isn't that that's fucked up? up? That's yeah. fucked up. Yeah, that's pretty fucked up. But Flint, Michigan should never have happened because those people, governors and mayors never should have any. Lazy planning. They should never have any say in anything re- dealing with water, electricity, or anything that you need to survive. Yeah. I mean, their opinion should not matter. I mean, you should always have... Uh, like, people that are actually went to school for this or actually have a background in it. I mean, you wouldn't want, like, the farmer down the road to be teaching your school about, like, math and stuff. Like, Mr. Uh, I have two cows, and I sell both of them to this guy, and he has four to begin with. Yeah. How many cows does he have in the end? I mean, exactly. it doesn't really make much sense. But you kind of screw yourself over with Flint, Michigan. They should never have done that. It would be easier to call it a, uh, a disaster relief site. Because not only are the public lines all trashed, what happens when the water that's contaminated goes into your pipes in your house? That pipes become contaminated. So now you have to rip out all the pipes in people's houses. Theoretically, you do. It's oh, been really? So long. Okay. So the trace amounts the stu- lead. If it's in the like the uh, I can't. I don't really remember what it was, but the water was contaminated and it contaminated the pipes in Flint, Michigan. That was the issue that they had. I remember. So why wouldn't it affect the pipes in people's houses? Unless they're trying to keep that quiet. Yeah, like if there's lead deposits yeah, I mean, that, that go into the plumbing of everybody's houses. Yeah, that, I didn't even think of that. But I do remember uh, watching somebody on YouTube about um, the what they, what they had intended. They, it was lead pipes, or like it might have been like an alloy of some kind. Yeah. But it made... You know, lead's easy to bend and it's flexible, um, but they had it had this coating. On yeah, the that was what it was, it. and it, it leaked through the uh, the contaminated water leaked through the coating because it was chlorinated water. Yeah, and it, it, it ate away the coating, and the coating was pretty thick to begin with to yeah. last a while. And when that happened, it contaminated the water to the point where that goes to bad. And I bet you they contaminate. You can have to blow out every other house if they don't have the same thing in their houses. Because mm-hmm. I mean, like. That infrastructure is pretty old. I mean, you don't see that many new uh, cities replacing their water infrastructure unless it's like a water main break happens because it's just way too expensive. Yeah. I mean, back in the day, you can get away with like cheap labor, this, that, whatever. You wouldn't have to believe in all the codes, this, that, whatever. It, it gets to the point where it's a lot easier to do stuff in the past, like building a bridge. Maybe it cost like, say, $10 million back in the day. Now it's going to cost you like $100 million. Yeah, building. solely because of all the uh, bureaucracy. And- all the bureaucracy. This guy sells the steel. He wants a big profit on it. Mm-hmm. I got to scratch this guy's back on the bid because he helped me out. So I got to give him some money and some uh, concrete. And it just turns into a big money grab. And, I mean, why why are we screwing over ourselves for the go- – uh, why are we screwing over the government when we're still having to pay it anyway? There's actually a guy um, – forget his name but he's like the he owns this company called like the the earthship company have you ever heard of earthships no i have not it's that thing with the tires 
where you, like you pack tires with dirt and then you put on plaster on it and just the the dirt is like an insulator well anyways the the um it was it's a way to like use uh basically garbage as like uh instead of lumber to save money on lumber so you just take old used tires stack them on top of each other and that's your house oh okay I was thinking you're going to uh, fill them with dirt and use them in a car. I'm like, that's going to be one bumpy-ass ride. I mean, that ride's (laughs) going to be shit. Your shocks are going to be shot after 20 miles. I know. All that. (laughs) I was thinking that. I didn't think it was in a house. No, no. That's like a way to design house. They also have, like, plastic where the people were making houses. Like, like, uh, how's that a plastic? Oh, yeah? Like, garbage plastic. They were were melting it and, like, turning it into, like, uh, like, foamed houses. That's pretty cool. But... Um, the thing is, is the the mentality of that whole company, and, and it's called Earthships. That's that's like the name of it. And um, the uh, in a couple interviews that I watched with him, he talked about how um, you know there are still pockets of freedom in America. You just need to look for them as far as building houses are concerned, and because that was the biggest uh, negative rub that they had was zoning. You know, it's like it, when you go to like a third world country, who gives it's a, so easy. Yeah, yeah who gives, who a, gives shit? a shit? I mean, like there's here no it's infrastructure like, there. Here you have to get anything changed from a commercial to residential. You have to go in front of a housing board. Or you have to go in front of the zoning board. Show up a proposal. Show up what you want to do. Show up your bill. Uh, what pretty much your whole life and tell them what you want to do. And you have to you have to uh, like pray that they say yes. Because if not, you're screwed. You just bought a piece of land. You have nothing to do with it. So I mean, you sometimes to sell it again. You, I mean, sometimes you can buy it, or you can don't have to buy it, and you can propose it while you're, while you're uh, on, under contract. Mm-hmm. But then again, still, it's like a crapshoot. I mean, zoning's. But then again, you also want you don't want like a Walmart in the middle of a neighborhood, do you? Maybe. In the middle of your neighborhood, that like you spent like maybe two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars on a house. Would you want a Walmart next door to your house? I mean, no. Yeah, but also, do you want, you know. A house, like, do you want like to to be able to buy a pl- a small plot of land? I'm not even talking about like you know a couple acres. I'm just talking about maybe like a half acre, and just building from the ground up your humble abode, and and. Oh, well, you got codes you got to believe in you, because yeah, it fire... sometimes takes like ten years. Yeah, well, if you to want get to, approval, you know, sometimes it's a little bit quicker than that. I mean, they're a little quicker. In California, here. it's not that. Well, quick. California, California is California. I mean, just just yeah. look at what they're. I mean, how many problems they're dealing with. Everybody's a rapist out there. Everybody's killing everybody. Everybody's not PC. I mean, it's, you get to a point where in your state... I didn't where, hear anything about that, but... Everybody's like, everybody's... It, California's just California. I mean, it's like comparing... Like, California is to liberals as Texas is to Republicans. Yeah, I could, I could see it's that, It's like yeah. all your liberties are free in Texas, and in California, everything's regulated. Everything you have to... You have to support this person who supports that person. Yeah, but it, then again, you look at California, and their homeless population is skyrocketing so fast, and you're wondering why nobody can afford housing. But when you look at the apartment rents, the rate rents, it's like twenty three hundred, twenty thirty two hundred a month. Ridiculous. I mean, it's more than New York State. It doesn't matter how nice and gentrified it looks either. No. You know, it's not worth that much money a month to live somewhere, to rent something. Why? Why would you want to do that? I mean, like own a house. But even in New yeah. York State. New York State, the city has uh, a higher minimum wage than the rest of the state. There is no other state in this uh, United States that actually does that. Why a higher is... minimum wage than the? No, one part of the state has a higher minimum wage than the other. California doesn't do it. We're the only state oh, that does okay. it. Okay, you... and that goes to the whole like, you know, splitting the state into two. Yeah. You know where one is I mean, more. Why would you? Why would you prefer? I mean. The point is, it's the people from New York City are moving up to uh, upstate New York, and are jacking up the price of the houses. And while we're minimum wages still staying the same, they can afford bigger stuff than we can, and we're pretty. You pretty much get pushed out. Yeah. That's why you're seeing most of the volunteer fire departments around here close. In upstate oh, I didn't New York. know that. You're seeing. I saw two of them close last year. They just closed their doors because they couldn't get the members because nobody can afford it. The blue collar people oh that God. volunteer. And same with the ambulance service. They're doing a lot worse. They closed 70 different rescue squads last year. That's ridiculous. And volunteer ambulance squads, they closed 70 of them. Or 70 oh pa- sla- paid slash volunteer. Most of them were volunteer. Just because they couldn't afford, or they didn't have enough volunteers. Because everybody's getting pushed out, or everybody can't afford it. 
where you have to work multiple jobs. And the volunteer industry is dying. I mean, nobody really wants to volunteer anymore. Why would you want yeah. to get volunteer for something when you can get paid for it? Exactly. It's all mentality of now. It's, it's too much time. No, I mean, I think people should get paid for whatever time and service that they give to something. I don't really believe in... I mean, if we're going to go through a money system where we need money for everything, you know, why not pay somebody for their time and effort towards something that means something to the rest of the population, you know? Yeah, but who wants to pay for that? Because once you pay for one, you got to pay for all of them. And it gets to the point where it's just going to put a burden on any state to pay for that. Yeah. Because you got you got count cities or towns with thousand thousand people on it, and you have a volunteer fire department. And you also have towns with 45,000 with, like, three volunteer fire departments. And it's like, sometimes you can't afford it. I mean... You're just pushing people out that can't afford the taxes. They can barely afford the rent. True. And yeah, if the taxes go up a little true. bit more, the homeowner, the business owner is just going to push it on the tenants, push them right out. Yeah, and that's the hidden issue with minimum wage increasing. That's like the the um, like the wealth doesn't get redistributed. It just means the middle class is just going to be squeezed further. Yeah, I mean, you because be- private industries are like uh, smaller county-based systems. Like uh, you know, um, you know, firefighting and, and yeah, ambulance everything. service. You got ambulance EMTs service. You got road people. You got the ca- uh, the garbage men. You got the. But, but now they're in a world department. where you need like ten to fifteen bucks an hour just to <coughs> survive. You well, know, those like, those jobs should be paid more than that to begin with. I think an EMT should be easily paid twenty bucks an hour. Yeah. Same thing with paramedics. They should be easily paid thirty bucks an hour. And I mean, I'll, even with police departments, there's some police departments out there. Where a police officers are getting paid twelve bucks an hour to put their life on the line, and they're willing to do it for the community. Yeah, it's like a couple bucks above minimum wage, and it it's just yeah, it's not worth it to it's some people. It's not worth it because it's know, not worth not coming home to your family or your kids or anything like that. And it gets to the point where it's like, at what point? I don't think anybody should be uh, living off the minimum wage. No, not at all. That's why it's minimum. It should never be on minimum wage. It should be above minimum wage. Minimum wage should not, shouldn't be an issue. I mean, working at McDonald's, yeah, minimum wage, because that's more of like a someone going through college, someone going through high school, someone going through a bad time. Right. In between jobs. Something, yeah, in between jobs, right. It shouldn't be a lifestyle. It shouldn't be work. You, you shouldn't want to work that place for the rest of your life. You need to go out there, get a trades degree. Become a, like a, uh, a welder, get in the electrical union, get into something. Uh, trade schools are the best. I mean, colleges or high schools aren't pushing for it, but trade schools are always hiring. They're always hiring. And some of these degrees that people get in, like uh, like animal masseuse or some random thing, like yeah, it's that has like them. maybe one job in the world, and they're exactly. teaching like 100 kids a year about it. And it's getting to the point where school, I believe high schools are pushing the guidance counselors and probably getting kickbacks on it. Definitely, for... yeah. I mean, it, it <laughs> adds to points. Like, if you're going to buy a plot of land or buy some real estate, yeah. they always, what do they look for? They look for, is this a good neighborhood? Is this a good school? What constitutes a good school, a good school system? It, uh, the, it's the grades of the students and the university look, but they all, yeah i mean but then again it's like most of the, when i was going to school they're like what kind of college do you want to go to? they didn't ask me hey do you want to go to a trade school or do you want to go to college they never asked me that i was never i was never told about like uh, the vocational work like you can do body shop welding this that whatever but they still didn't want to they didn't teach most people that i mean i didn't get told that until like after sophomore year i'm like oh i could have done that well now it's too late but I believe they just gave it to the kids that weren't going to go anywhere in life. And now they're making more money than any yeah, of us. Yeah, I mean, they're making more money than all of us. Everybody shits. Yeah. You need I mean, plumbing. I mean, yeah, everybody, you need electrical work because you want to power your laptop. Exactly. Computer, That's, that's TV. exactly what I'm doing right now. Yeah. I'm powering my laptop. <laughs> you, you need that. You need, like, people to be infrastructure. You need to be, like, engineer. Everybody, our school wanted people to be engineers, doctors, lawyers. And anything in the medical or technology field, they didn't think about anybody else, and they didn't really push any other options out there. You had to figure it out on your own. You know, I did have this debate with somebody a couple weeks ago about this, who who's a hundred percent pro college, and they just are completely blind to reality. And and I under I empathize with that because I was at that state too. Where yeah, when I, I went would, to college, I was like, I was thinking it was top Because shit. I believe that it was just 
you know what it is? It's, you you we, needed to survive. You we need... were indoctrinated into believing that because that's all we knew. I mean, that's all we knew in school. I mean, same thing with, like, uh, the reason why I think I was, like, I leaned more to the liberal side than what I do right now. I leaned maybe a little bit towards the conservative side, but I'm still an independent. But the way school's brought you up, it's yeah. hard to love, love everybody. They pretty much push this one agenda and then... Whatever state you're, you know, whatever state you're in, that agenda pretty much works, and that's what happens. This uh, astro theologist I follow um, talks about a bunch of different uh, plays on words that uh, have permeated through society, and how graduation, when you split it in two, it's gradual indoctrination, and that speaks a lot of truth to me because. You know, most of what we think, you know, that whole liberal-esque left-leaning mentality is indoctrinated to most younger people. And that's why most, uh, um, you know, millennials and Z, uh, Gen Z types are very um, left-leaning. Yeah, and then you got people that are blue-collar workers that are working this, uh, working like at the, doing plumbing, working at the steel mill or whatever doing all these blue collar jobs they all lean towards the right cuz that's what they've been believe they what they've been taught. Yeah. Yeah, hey, that and it's maybe what they believe in too. I mean, like my whole family was uh Democrats. My great great uncle ran for mayor of Albany too. Oh, really? I have a couple I have a couple parents or ancestors that have buildings named after them in Albany. Really? Yeah. It's connected to too. Oh, uh, no, just Albany. I mean, I had the uh, what is it, the Civil service buildings named after my great grand, uh, great 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 aunt, uncle, okay. and I think there's a soup kitchen named after one of my aunts. Oh, that's awesome! Yeah, it's so, pretty. Uh, but then pretty it big gets deal, to the man. point where it's like, why? I mean, why do we have two party system? Do we really need to have a two party system? Uh, I think that's how it's been designed, and it's it's a good polarization tool to divide and conquer but i just don't like how people are like oh you don't look like this person you're a racist or a bigot or you like this person you're uh what's in this you're thoughtless whatever. and soy I mean, boy yeah, and mean, all that stuff yeah. i mean it's like no i mean it gets to that point where there's like the libertarians i'm like that's like the middle ground it's like i mean they're not going to get anywhere i mean the last depart, uh, party the third party to really go anywhere was the green moose party under Teddy Roosevelt. Oh, and really? That was one of the last ones. Maybe. I didn't know that was that was his party. Yeah. The Green Moose Party. I think that was it. I think it was that or something else. But I believe it was like one of the last times an independent party actually won the presidency. No, there was, well, I mean, there was like, um, it was Democrats <clears throat> and the Whig Party. And then Abraham Lincoln, the Republican he brought up the Republican Party. He brought up the Republican Party and, you know, was anti-slavery and pro-social justice. And uh, now it's flipped. You know, Democrats are social justice and Republicans are, you know, have counter arguments against social justice. Rightfully so. But, you know, there, there are still some uh, parts of social justice that I do agree with when it comes to uh, pro racially profiling someone, um, and, and it's and it, it's not the the thing is is what they do wrong is you know they they talk about white privilege, white this, white that you know. Us Wh as white males, we're not going anywhere in life. Yeah, much, exactly. Because we all have these white uh, white privilege cards that I still haven't gotten in my mail. Yeah, I, where's my like, white privilege I mean, check? I mean, Jesus, there's privilege out there. It's not white privilege. Saying white privilege is racist in itself. I mean, you should never be saying white privilege. I mean, there is privilege out there. Look yeah, at look privilege. at uh, well, look at yeah. It's just privilege. I mean, it's not white privilege. It's not black privilege. It's not Asian privilege. It's not it's Hispanic privilege. privilege. It's just privileged. You're a privileged child, and that's how you got some place in your life. You should not be segregating, or you should not be saying just white privilege because it's not that. It's divisive. So, uh, yeah, because I mean, some people work their ass off that are white people just to get some place in their life. And they're saying, the only reason why you got there is because white privilege. It's like, no, because I worked my no, ass no, off. No, because my ancestors paid their dues yeah. as immigrants. I mean, it's like... As they, immigrants at the time, they weren't even allowed to be called white. Yeah, I mean, like, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm part uh, Irish. And yeah. the Irish were treated almost as, uh, 
as worse as the blacks. At the time. At the time. They were treated like slaves. They were treated like the Chinese at the same time during the railroad. They were treated like slaves. They were treated like a third person, like the untouchables in India. They were treated like absolute trash. They were thought of of as like uh, subhuman people. Yeah. And it's the same thing with like... uh, Same here. And it's like it gets it gets it was horrible. I mean, that's why you see all these Irish people going for like civil service jobs, like police officers and fire departments and all that stuff, because that was what the community did. That was a stereotypical trope too, and it's yeah. still and it's still kind of relevant today. You see a lot of Irish names in in, uh, in fire those departments, but it's like a police departments. departments, and it's like that's because mm-hmm. their family lineage. They I mean they took that 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 point in time. Those jobs were the least paying jobs of, out there, and they I can took imagine. them. Yeah, because they had to take whatever they could. Yeah, and you know it's it's a similar thing with like the Polish people, the the Italians, the Jews, the Germans at the time. You know, it's just they they weren't they were still foreigners and people who were already there, the Americans who were already there and nativized, um, you know, didn't consider them Americans until a couple generations went went by, and we were able to assimilate yeah. into the American culture. The the I think the awkward rub that happens is just just wait a couple generations and and as, work towards assimilating like a melting pot, not a tossed salad, a melting pot. There you go. Tossed salad doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, I remember learning about tossed salad. In, is there uh, someone that's not going to like carrots? The ones that's not going to like tomatoes in that tossed salad. Yeah, exactly. But if you put everything that everybody wants into one... You get a nice, tasty I mean, you can't just throw somebody in there. You gotta ease it in, sprinkle it in. I mean, that's the same thing with immigration. You can't just toss everybody into one country and call it a day. I mean, you throw a thousand people into a small town that only has like maybe like 17,000 people, there's gonna be a big infrastructure problem. Yeah, there's gonna be a big cultural problem, too. I mean, that's why you can't have... uh, that's why immigration in the United States is so limited because everybody wants to come in. Not that many people want to leave unless they die. Yeah, or they get that's thrown true. out. But uh, you can't like immig- like uh, undocumented immigrants. You can't take everybody in. I mean, if you did that, I mean, what are you telling the people that have been waiting twenty years to get into this country legally, even though it shouldn't take twenty years to do it? Could that be seen as some form of uh, victim-based imperialism or invasion of some kind? I feel like, um, you know, maybe at first it's, you know, you open your doors to somebody, you know, and, and you, the kindness of your heart is just like, I want to help you out in the best way, shape, or form I can until you figure out, you know, what you want to do. And even the Dalai Lama says, you know, if they t- want need to seek refuge, they, I recommend them doing so, but they need to go back. That's what he's. Those are his words saying. That's true. I mean, you can't yeah. take all the doctors out of one country to bring them to here, and then not expect them to have any. Like, they wouldn't be able to get anywhere. I yeah. mean, you come here, you come to America, or come to Canada, or you come to another country. You learn something. You build a career here. You learn the trade, and then you go back to your home country or wherever you're from. And I mean, you're not going to be making as much. I mean, your quality of life might be a little bit worse, but you're bringing it back to your community. And one day, that community is going to be uh, be built up. And I mean, it's not one person's decision. I mean, it's a whole community, whole country's decision to come back and build that country up. Look at Japan. They yeah. are one of the fastest growing countries in the world. I mean, China is too. China yeah, rightfully like, so. They work their asses off, I mean, man. they started recently building roads, and I mean, they have like the... The process of getting a driver's license there is a ridiculous, or like a registration plate is ridiculous. Oh, it's absolutely it's, like, it's a lot like it's a, lot, it's a lottery. It's a lottery. Oh, okay. It's a lottery. I heard that was something like that uh, in Italy, where like you have to take a couple years of driver's ed courses. Oh, it's not even that. It's you driving have to get a wrong. lottery. You have to apply for a lottery you have to buy a ticket, pretty much to get oh, into a, to get. You have a chance to get a registration plate or a oh, license that's crazy. plate. That's crazy. Because, I mean, they don't want everybody to start driving at once because then you're just going to have traffic problems. You want to yeah. ease everybody into it because driving is just a relatively new thing in some of these cities. Yeah, and I, I think that might be wiser solely because they're learning from our mistakes and everything in America is based on, uh, you know, that's why everything's more spread out in, in American culture where you need a car to get somewhere. Not I, everything is centrally located. Yeah, like in China, Japan... 
India for the most part. Uh, any of the Asia, any of the really in Asia, they also usually have big metropolitans with big metro systems. Same thing with Italy, literally for the most part. Uh, some of the big major cities of the United States have it. England, really good. You see good. a couple mopeds in in Italy. Yeah, I mean, like you also have mass transit in all of the EU. True. Real big massive transport system. Germany, England, France. That, that's why I'm kind of that that that's something I was excited about when Obama was elected. He talked about revamping the uh, railroad system. He in his uh, inauguration speech. I mean, he never did anything that he really he promised. He never to did do. any of that. I mean, I can promise you, I'm going to give everybody a pony. Doesn't mean I'm going to do it. I mean, you're just promising somebody, and you're you're hoping that they vote for you on that promise. And the voter is actually hoping that that person keeps that promise, which might never, ever happen. That's, that's why I'm worried Ch- about any Democrat candidate. Cause, because, I mean, it's... you can promise somebody the world, and you're not going to do it. I mean, like the last couple times the Democrats got into office, some of his what he promised never happened. I mean, look at Trump. Yeah. He promised prison reform. He promised this, that, and whatever. I mean, he promised a wall, but he's not really getting a wall, but he's still trying to do stuff on immigration, illegal immigrants. He's getting a fence. Because why would you, if you're waiting in line for 10 years to get something, and someone budges you in line, everybody's fine with it, except for uh, except for the people in line. But the person who's running the place is perfectly fine with it. Wouldn't you get pissed off? I'd be really pissed off. I'd be really they... pissed off, because then it's just pushing you out for a couple more years. And I mean, I mean, like, if you're going through, I mean, some of these, car- like the caravans down there, if you're running from, uh, like, persecution, running from hostile, con- con- all that stuff, go to a country that'll take you in. Mexico a- Me- Mexico even said to the people in the caravan, we will take you in. Same thing with some of these other countries in South America. We'll take you in. We'll take care of you. They're like, no, nah, we're going to America. I all mean, right. what are yeah. you actually escaping? Yeah, I know. Seriously. I mean, are you escaping for a better life or are you accept- escaping for your life? I mean, there's two exact, there's two distinct differences on, that's why I don't like. Are you under attack? Yeah, I mean. Versus, like, you know, like do the you whole, just want a better quality of life? Like the whole, like, movie, like the Hotel Rwanda, that whole incident. That was perfectly fine. Anybody just getting the hell out of there. Yeah, get, yeah, you got to take all those people, there. get them out of there. You know, the UN really sat on their asses speaking. But you, the which thing is, like, with that. Syria, with all, like, the, in, uh, yeah, like with all the terrorism and all like the other things that were going on there, even with Nazi Germany, when you're trying to move Jews out of it, uh, moving people out of were like, victimized after uh, World War Two. I mean, you took some pe- uh, like Nazis and took some other uh, oh, you people mean, by accident. Yeah, well, actually, some of it might have been on purpose. With uh, you know, like with Operation Paperclip, yeah, that was like a big. I read about uh, that the other day. That was a big thing that U.S. was competing with Russia, Soviet Russia, with where I mean, um, with some of the scientists they completely wiped their backgrounds with and just took it as that. Yeah, but I mean, was that for the greater good? I mean, do you think of those, technology? I mean, so, it was. I mean, most of those people probably didn't want to do half that stuff, but if they didn't, they were going to get killed. And they had a they had they had ideas that they needed to push on to the future. I mean, if without them, we wouldn't have pl- uh, jet engines like we do now. We, I don't. I don't think we would have had. Yeah, like space would, shells. We wouldn't either. have space shells because they were they were new rockets. We would be put. We'd probably be doing rockets right now, or like the uh, ten years ago. There's probably like some crazy alien technology that isn't disclosed to the public yet that the Germans invented in the fifties, or the forties even. But uh, what were we talking about before? Oh yeah, letting people in. Uh, you just can't let everybody in. I mean. Yeah, you want to be PC or this, that, whatever. You want to let people in. But you have to be selective. I mean, you can't, like... Where do... The thing The thing I don't yeah, get might... about the left-wing perspective is, like, they haven't drawn lines. Yeah, that's where, what we've been talking about When it comes before. to, like, sexual harassment, where it comes to foreign policy, and, you know, like, uh, immigration They're reform. Like, yeah, let's go for it. I mean, like, where do you draw... Like, anything... Where's the line? I mean, it was, I was talking about PC before. At what point do we get so PC that we can never go back to where we were? I mean, where do you draw the line on what's acceptable, what's not acceptable? I mean, you could have pedosexuals, you could have this, that, whatever. You could have, uh, I can just keep on saying that fucking word, but fuck that. I'll try, try to stop saying <laughs> this, that, whatever. I'll try to stop saying that. But uh, you could have, like, pedo- pedosexuals. You also have um, people that are 
What is in, into animals? Yeah, like furries. Beast reality. Yeah, beast reality. I mean, I mean yeah, furries. I'm like, furries I don't care. is one thing. That's more like fantasy based, uh, in some areas. But you know, then there's bestiality, like you said. Um, you know, what else can you? I mean, it's like we have. Uh, if you own a business. And someone who's, say, transgender wants to work at the reception desk at your place. And you sell tires. And you live in the middle of nowhere, Nebraska. Do you think that's the first thing you want somebody to come into your store and see someone that maybe looks a little weird? I mean, that's like hiring me to do, like... uh, well, that, that goes with the whole, like, tattoos and piercings thing. In, I mean, in the facial workplace. tattoos. I mean, facial tattoos, you should never get them because they look stupid and you're going to regret them because you're going to look like you're gonna look like shit in your future. But uh, he, tattoos and piercings, it's like you can't call harassment for not being hired on that, but you can call being harassment on being transgender. It's like you have an image to push up. You have an image to hold up onto. It's like I can't be letting everybody that looks like uh, – like, like someone from the insane clown posse working my reception desk because that'd be just weird. Yeah, like it with the juggalo. Yeah, the juggalo and mask. Stuff. Yeah, you yeah. wouldn't want somebody doing that. I right. can understand where some of these businesses are like, yeah, we can't hire you for this position because it's. I mean, if you're doing computer work and you're in the back, I mean, I'll hire anybody. It's like I'm not saying for yeah. like a race or anything like that. I'm just saying for an image as your company. Life choices. I mean, you don't see, Mc, uh, Ronald McDonald coming out as transgender. Because that would be really, 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 that would stress out their company. Because you would have... It would divide things. It would divide things. You know, but the thing with uh, Chick-fil-A, where they uh, talked about some anti-gay stuff, um, or how, like, the CEO was, like, openly, like, anti-gay because they had Christian values. They had tons of people supporting Chick-fil-A that weekend that were were pro-Chick-fil-A. And then that, for some reason, like they thought that by by that news coming out of them being uh, um, homophobic, uh, would it it actually backfired? You know, like the thought that yeah. they would go out of business actually backfired, and now Chick Fil A is way more successful than it was, solely because you know there there's enough people to defend them, and I feel like that was the the case with someone like uh, Donald Trump or just even a guy like Justin Bieber. Where there are enough haters to have the loyal fans, uh, dedicated fans of that person, uh, defend them to, um, you know, uh, uh, I guess put them in a bubble where they'll buy anything that that person has out of defense and out of spite of the other person that hates them. And I, I, I call that the Justin Bieber effect because the longest time Justin Bieber was under the radar. And then when Trump came into the office, people forgot about Justin Bieber. Justin Bieber did the roast. Then Trump started running for president. Yeah. That's kind of how the chronology I noticed happened. It's like it, it was almost like a baton pass of hate well, from the, one yeah, the Justin celebrity Bieber to another. Yeah, the roast was Justin Bieber wanting money. Yeah, or Who was or that other person that wanted that roast? Who was the other person that got the roast? It was Justin Patrice Bieber. Patrice O'Neill? No, was on there. it was like somebody else before Justin Bieber. Charlie Sheen? No, no, it was right after Just, just uh Oh shit. Um it was after him. Oh, give me a second, I'll check my phone. He was on an Atkins wasn't he on like an Atkins commercial? Um, I don't know. Let me check my phone real quick because I'm actually really interested in this. Because I believe I, I believe may have been Justin Bieber, but I don't know. But all I know is the guy did it for the money. And it was a lot of money coming up, so Oh, like you get paid for that? Oh, yeah. I mean, Comedy Central does advertisements out the ass for it. Yeah, it's like the Super Bowl for comedy. He, I mean, it's all... Well, just, not, that, not that big, I mean, but, you, you, know. you say some racist things, you say some edgy things, but especially right now in the PC world, where do we draw the line on comedians? I mean, you have people coming to comedian shows and getting offended by what the comedian says. Yeah, I saw like a, a one of those uh, YouTube cringe videos. Yeah. The like the femina- feminism cringe videos where like. Oh, fe- what is it? Feminism wrecked. No, it's it's one of them. It's I, there was the feminism wreck got bought. The guy sold the channel to somebody else who's actually like uh, transgender or something like that. So it's kind of weird. 
Oh, I'm not weird. even joking. That's, That's what crazy. freaking happened. It was like gener- uh, feminism wrecked. Their YouTube channel got like taken over by some guy. It's like he's. I mean, he might be uh, transitioning I mean, to a woman. And or I to mean, a man. no. I mean, he went as in one of his videos. He tra- uh, he dressed up or he went as a girl for a day. Okay. But That's he was. Crazy. He's like he's a kind of like the exact opposite of what the clientele of the original YouTube channel was. That's not. It, it was just weird. I'm just glad that whoever made the channel made their money. And <laughs> like whoever bought it out, geez, you gotta you gotta appease people that might be against you, you know. Um, I'm trying to think though. What was the name? What were we talking about before? Um, no, no, this guy was like start. He was kind of flirting with a girl, but he was just kind of being a goofball. But the girl took it as like uh, um. He was like objectifying her, but he was just like talking about banana bread, and she just threw a drink at him and just chucked the glass at him, and and stormed off. I don't know. It was just really, like, geez, can't you just like walk out? Do you have to make a scene? Yeah. Be violent, you know. Like when a guy does that to a guy, you could beat the shit out of him. You know, if they like throw a drink at you and like throw some glass at you or like even yeah, a woman punches. does it you can't really do anything that's acceptable because it's like oh but i mean equal lefts mean equal rights man in my book if yeah. someone's beating the shit out of you and you're like hoping that you're going to survive you defend yourself i mean yeah. you're not hitting a woman you're defending yourself i mean hitting a woman is striking the first punch if she throws a drink at you just walk away if she comes back at you swinging yeah that wasn't the situation though no no, it was and, just threw a drink, left, made a scene. But it was just kind of douchey. I mean, who the fuck the, does that? It was immature. I, I, I guess that's the that's the point I was getting at. And it, and it goes back to my point about how kids now and are, are you know, because they act like children, even in their 20s. Kids our age. Yeah, I mean, you know, like, they look, just at the, act look at Antifa. Like, just a bunch of children in masks yeah. doing stupid stuff. I mean, like, honestly, if you want to make change in your community, start volunteering. Help it do it. Help doing like vote. Uh, like, like what? What's it called when you go out there and like try to promote somebody? Um, support. Support. Yeah, yeah. yeah support supporter. Your local... Support your whoever you believe in. Don't go out there destroying a city. Because I mean, the only thing people look at you is you're some type of an asshole that goes out there and destroys a city. I mean, you That's all don't that comes really. Up. I would. I mean, like Antifa. It stands for anti-fascism. By terrorizing somebody else's beliefs. You are being fascist. It is yeah. a fascist by movement. by I- imposing a, a, an enforced Restri- belief. Yeah, and restricting somebody else's beliefs is fascism. Thought policing too. Yeah, so you, know? you being anti-fascist is you being a fascist. So you should just be antifa of yourself and just go play off in the corner. Yeah, just believe what you believe. Yeah, whatever you want to vote for. The thing support is, who you want to support, but it's like you don't. I mean, nobody likes Illinois Nazis. Nobody likes Nazis. Nobody likes KKK. I mean, even the conservatives don't like them. No matter what, you're gonna see people on the conservative side say, "Whoa, whoa, whoa, these these fuckers aren't with us." And yeah. you're gonna see that a lot more. Or you're gonna see that you still see that today. I mean, like, they're not with us. They're I don't support them. I don't know. I don't really give a shit what they do as long as they don't impede somebody else's existence on life. I mean, everybody here. Republican and uh, Democrat is all here for the uh, pursuit of happiness. Even if you lean to the center. I lean towards the center. But if I... you lean towards the center in, in a place, in an Antifa-ridden capital like Oregon or, or California, somewhere out west, they're going to see you as far right, a far right radical, and you must be taken out. And that's ridiculous i mean yeah i mean it's like antifa is like the same version of like the kkk going out there and protesting dr martin luther king's speeches i mean that's like the same process on anybody if you're going against what you believe in or people that you don't believe in i mean it's, there's no difference they're the exact same yeah definitely. You're, so you're doing terrorism you're doing you're putting terror in people's eyes and trying to make them conform to what you believe in through terror, violence, fear mongering, and fear mongering, fear mongering, and and I think that's how Trump won. I mean, honestly, people were always talking so much shit about Donald Trump, so much shit, so much mm-hmm. shit. 
and everybody's like, so who are you voting for? Oh, I'm gonna, I don't know who I'm gonna vote for. Those people, the polls that the uh, all these news organizations got, they didn't get them justifiably because they were shitting on Donald Trump. Yeah, they're they're so in their, their ivory their tower. Were so uh, var- varied, yeah. and those people that were gonna vote for Donald Trump showed up to vote. Definitely. And Donald Trump won. I mean, he didn't win the popular vote, but he, the Electoral College has to be there for a certain reason on that if we had the, got rid of the Electoral College, three states would have the most voting power. Actually, technically a little bit four. be California, New York, Texas, and Florida. And then people would have to flock to those four states in order to be considered relevant. Yep. And, and the thing is, is like I had this debate, um, the same person that I had the debate with about college universities my uh, disagreement with uh, trying to subsidize uh, colleges because they're th- that's a whole other discussion because it's a huge business. But um, that's the reason why I believe in the Electoral College solely because there are so many people that nobody cares about. And her whole, her whole uh, opinion was just, well, why don't they just move to the city? It's like... I mean, you can't... Nobody wants to move to a giant pile of shit like I New mean, York okay, City. You've lived in the United States all your life. You want your voice to matter? Move to Cuba. Move to Canada. I don't want to move there. Don't tell a lot of people to move. I mean, yeah, you shouldn't. It, you should be the way you. The way you want to live life is the way you want to live life. People don't care about Utah. Nobody cares about Kansas. Nobody cares about like Missouri or just North or South Dakota. The only times you hear that are like if there's an emergency or some problems going on there. With the standing Sioux. The uh, Dakota yeah. Access Pipeline thing when they were going to Nobody basically fuck up the them. water supply up there. Nobody cares about them. Yeah. Nobody cares about them. And if they don't have their vote that matters, I mean, that's that's course for a civil war. I mean, that's going to be the next civil war. If you get literally electoral college, that's uh, one way for all these smaller states to rise up against it and secede. Because if they don't have a say in anything that goes on, what the hell are they doing here then anyway? Yeah. Because it's and like if you're just going to be the small kid in the corner saying – you have an opinion or something you want to say, and you have no way of saying it. What the hell is the point of even showing up to work? Why don't you just quit? Yeah, quit and start exactly. your own country. Start your I own mean, country, and it's a lot easier that way. But you don't screw with the electoral college just because your candidate didn't win. I mean, if it was the other way around and the Democrats won due to the electoral college and not you know, by the popular vote, would you be bitching? That's a simple question. The thing I don't understand, though, and this is coming from an ignorant standpoint. What's the difference between a super delegate and just a regular delegate? Like I never got that. Not too sure. On like I that. feel like if they got rid of the ex- existence of a super delegate, I think they should just get rid of the existence of win all states, like New York. Yeah. I mean, New York is one of the most divided states in the United States as it is. Looking at all the major cities, all of them voting Democrats, especially in the North. Yeah. And everybody else is voting Republican. I mean, it really shows you that New York State is one of the most divided states in the Union. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I, I can't upstate believe and it. downstate. You have to specify that you're upstate or yeah. downstate. I mean, if someone's like, oh, you're from New York City, it's like, nope, no, no. No, that's... Uh, There's a whole other part of the state. I mean, like, even in California. So you say, oh, you're from California. Where are you from, Los Angeles or San Francisco? It's the same thing. Or Texas. Or what, are you from Houston or Austin? It's like, no, I'm like... Oh, well, you're right in Florida? How's and... Orlando? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you, you go to Disney all the time. No, I'm from Tampa. Sorry. I, uh... I'm, I'm, I'm down on the Keys. Yeah, like... Oh, how's Miami? Yeah. It's like, yeah, I mean, like... It's kind of by Miami, but not that close. Or you live in Georgia. How's Atlanta? Where? How close do you live to Atlanta? No, no. Yeah. That's not how it, that's well, not how it is, you know? The now, rest... you know now you know the struggle, but New York, New York is, like, one of the most diverse states at end. They need to change it from a win-all state to elect, uh, like a a little bit more humility would be nice. I mean, in, uh, New they, York I, state. I, if I vote for governor, no matter what, the Democrats gonna win. If I vote for presidency in New York state, no matter what, the Republic or the Democrats gonna win. So why even vote? Why even leave the house that day? Why even vote for anybody above like a, a senator or a congressman? I mean, there's no point. There's absolutely no point to vote for somebody like that. The thing is, is the people need a bit more power. And uh, if there's a way to add like a third or fourth or fifth party into the mix and have them have as as much equal representation and media coverage as the other two candidates. You're not going to. The media, you'd have to create like new more. That's the thing. 
they, I, I think it was something like Donald Trump had the combined. Uh, and this he wasn't independent. Do you know why he ran underneath the uh, Republican Party? Because you know it's an ultimatum. Because yeah, they would, yeah, because they would accept him. I mean, if he, he ran, I believe one year he was thinking about running as an independent. He ran, well, was going to run one year as a de- Democrat. He believes in what he wants to believe. He doesn't let other people tell him what to believe in. I mean, even though his ideas might be messed up, he believes in what he wants to believe in. His ideas haven't changed that dramatically. Like Hillary Clinton, she was against abortion in the 1990s, completely against it. Yeah. She was against immigrants in the, uh, 2008. All those opinions changed when she was running for presidency. All she's voting for, all she's running for is the votes. I mean, if you like, uh, the thing is, it's like both sides need to realize this. Look at what somebody in the past has been going for and see if yeah. those ideas have changed for the good or just for votes. Because what I view as the Democrats is they're just looking for votes. So what, I don't, they don't give a shit about us. They just care about votes. I mean, I, it doesn't. It just boggles my mind how people can vote for them when all, like, all the facts are out there, but you're just turning a blind eye to them. I don't know Donald Trump's an asshole. He shouldn't even have a Twitter. I mean, he should have his Twitter suspended because he well, shouldn't even be The thing is, is he's not as eloquent as Obama or somebody like President Clinton. And the thing is, is that Clinton actually had a harsh, hawk-like uh, immigration policy in, he did. In, in implementing the fencing system. But for you know, for border patrol uh, with uh, New York or not New York, uh, Mex- United States Mexico. and Mexico. And you know who enforced that? Donald Trump. And everybody's like, oh, he's kicking all these people out. And no, he's enforcing a rule or a law that Clinton, Clinton made. made. Yeah. And all these news organizations are saying that Trump did this, Trump did that. They don't give a shit. They don't give a shit about the facts. They just give a shit about putting out their political message. And that's why I think most of these political uh, base like news organizations, late night, they just need to get rid of them and make them non-biased. I mean, if but then again, who's the hell's gonna watch something when it's non-biased versus what you want to hear? We're turning to the time of the year or time in like our lifetime where news is just turning into what you what changing the channel to what you want to listen to. Yeah. Do you want to hear someone talk shit about Trump, or do you want to hear somebody talk shit about the Democrats, or do you want to hear somebody talk shit about big business or small business or the LGBTQ community or this that whatever? The internet is so progressed. Even on this podcast, where there's so many people putting out there what they believe in and their facts, that their own personal truths, you can tune ideals. You can tune into what you want to hear, and you can become a hermit. Yeah, and I sometimes have uh, seen myself getting into that whole slump, and you know, I looked into things like MGTOW and you know, anti-feminist types of things, and I feel like I had the capacity to radicalize and just be like anti-women in general but it's not that. you know it, that that's the thing though it's like there there has to come a, a form of self-discipline that n- not a lot of people are consciously aware of to overlook um just being popular that that's the thing it's 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 a war against you know just trying to be different and and you know like that's like a whole like 2009 or 2007 yeah m- mo- motif where it was just like you know the whole ad <clears throat> campaign was try to be different try to be unique change obama yeah 2008 we have change. tons of diversity we don't have any diversity of thought we have tons of robots that is the that is probably the best thing i've heard all week yeah we have diversity but not diversity of thought i yeah, mean take that you either bite. a or you b I mean, there's no C, there's no G, there's no D, there's no E, there's no other letters in the alphabet. Yeah. There's only A and B. Or A prime. You know, you could you can add to yeah. like. Yeah, I mean, you could be like paradigm. radicalized in that part, but there's only they only care about two different. They don't care about libertarians. How many times do you think libertarians have made it on the news, prime time, with advertisements? Like a couple once, times. Once or twice. Yeah, and that's 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 what I was getting to earlier about like that's why Trump won. I mean, you know how because much... he got the most. Even, even when he, people were talking shit about him. I mean, what That's is it? Still coverage. CNN was covering him for like 84, 90% of the day. Yeah. And he didn't have to pay for any of the advertisement. I mean, I don't think he paid for any advertisement. That's what uh, Lady Gaga, um, when she was with the whole women's rights protest, or not Lady Gaga, no, I'm thinking of like... Katy Perry? No, I'm thinking of like her predecessor. She's kind of like a Madonna. Kesha? Very similar. No, it was Madonna, who uh, was just like, oh, I want to bomb the White House or something like that. I, I, they're all pop singers. I, I uh, their can't opinions get don't matter. They're, they're celebrities. Their opinions don't matter but, worth shit. But anyways, she was just like, I want to bomb the White House. But she knew she was going to get some free um, 
she was going to get some free coverage on Fox News talking about, oh, is she anti-American? You know, and it was it's just uh, interesting to see, you know, like what people are willing to say in order to get their brand out there. And I feel like that's what's what's becoming the Internet. You how know, much, the yeah, how much mainstream you saw, media. Like, even with YouTubers, I've seen say the most YouTubers, outrageous thing. If I get a million subscribers, I'll make I'll start a Pornhub account for hot women or for like beautiful uh, women out there doing that. And they I do know. that, and they get millions and millions of subscribers and shit. And that's it's like amazing. that's 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 just selling your body. That's just selling your soul. Well, but, they do make some bank. That's for sure. Oh that's, yeah, I mean, it's like you're I selling your read, body, and like people like feminism should be like they should be. I mean, you are you. I mean, yeah. I'm not feminist. I'm not anti-feminist. I believe that we are pretty much equal. Based on the single facts, I saw one guy who was talking about somebody to a feminist. They're saying, do you believe in uh, equal right or equal pay? He's like, yes. Do you understand that there's a pay gap, wage gap? And he's like, no, there's not. And he's like, why is that? There's a difference on what women are going for in occupation, what, what men are going for in occupation. I mean, you can't, you, you look at it an even standpoint on women contractors versus men, male contractors or women doctors and male doctors. There's no difference. There's like maybe a minuscule pay difference here and there. Yeah. Versus for women and for men. Definitely. But and you can't combine like most men going are for military, construction, all these union jobs. Whereas women are like as there's a as a trend right now is most women are actually going back to be stay at home moms because health care is too damn fucking expensive. And I don't blame them. Yeah. And uh, but and you know what? The thing that that made america what it is today and, and not giving a fuck about that shit well, just well the thing like was it was just the times before and this is going to make me sound like an old man but it was just the nuclear family worked you know there was and it and it's not a sex thing no, either if there's not a if there's a thing. breadwinner there's got to be somebody to to mother the kids whether it be uh, a Father mothering the kids personally, or a mother stay, mothering the personally, kids. Personally, I would be a stay-at-home dad. That, that seems like the best job ever. Yeah, I, you know, I'd be into that and then have somebody do all yeah, the Yeah, I mean, like all the hard bitch work. work. Definitely. Yeah, but it's like, it gets to the point where it's like, nobody cares. I, I I don't care about the page wage gap. I mean, you work for how much you work. I mean, how many women out there besides when they change the rules for firefighting and police and they change the law or the training requirements to lower it down? I mean, I'm a white male. I can't get a job as a fireman or a police officer anywhere right now. Really? Because if I'm a white male, I'm not a minority. In New oh, York you don't State, diversify. In New York State, I am not a minority. I am not a gender. I don't have. I'm not a. I'm not a female. I'm not a. I'm not African American. I'm not Hispanic. I'm not a minority. So it's harder for me to get a job anywhere in a civil service aspect because I am a white male. Really. It, because all they look for is, are you black? Do you diversify the the workplace? Is I, yeah, I'm I mean, assuming that that's I don't, what I don't it like is. that. I mean, if you like, there was one state or one fire department out there that had to lower their exam testing, like the level that they're testing at, to get make sure that more African Americans got in. Wow. And I mean, yeah, I heard I about mean, that in construction field or maybe in like the tech field. OK, and it's that's not, OK. It's not even against white people either. It, no. They were actually denying more Asian people that were signing up for for yeah. universities, too. And I mean, it, it gets to the point where you cannot be diverse. It's it's you fight. You put whoever is the best at doing something in. I don't care if they're white, black, an alien from another planet or like a mongoloid from down on the earth. As long as they can do the job or do do the best they can, get in. Yeah. I mean, but you also have to keep some here and there for, like, scholarships, like for African Americans, for trying to get boosting up in certain areas so you can be more PC for big colleges. And, right, yeah. But make, you shouldn't be for, for focusing on All it is is to have them be the poster child to say, look we're at me, ad- look we're at a change. Look at us. We're we're for advancement. We're for culture. We're for the change stuff. of the United States. But it's like, no, you're just being a piece of shit. And, you know, the college I worked at, um, I believe there was a position open. And I uh, signed up. I thought, you know, m- maybe uh, the person who got the job. I didn't end up getting the job. And I, another person signed up for the job who was more qualified than I was. Technically speaking, he knew more about technology and computers than I did. And uh, he didn't get the job. 
I didn't get the job. So both of us were kind of like, all right, hopefully this person is a lot more experienced than, than us. She didn't know anything. <laughs> she didn't, like, I had to teach her how to, like, properly what, wrap cables. What the fuck is gaff tape? Yeah. Uh, well, how to, how, how the hell to actually work a soundboard. And it I was mean, just. That's it's, not a job you should be taking then. It's just, it's just disappointing that, that I have to teach somebody that should know more than me, who, who makes more than me, how to do their job. Who should have known more than the guy that was above you. Right. Well, no, no, no. I mean, not my bosses. Like the, or another yeah. guy that the guy who knew more than you. I mean, it's like I, I that would piss me right off to the point where it's like, fuck it, I quit. I was like, let go because you know it was just temp work. But it, you know, it was one of those things where is she just there to diversify the the building, the office workspace, so it wasn't just a bunch of white males? The the thing is, is that's what do we value more as Americans? You know, you go to places like uh, Japan who are seemingly, you know, progressive by at the surface because they're not white males or they're not all exclusively white people. But when you look at uh, Japanese culture, it's very restrictive towards other other races of people. Oh, yeah. Like white people and black people. They don't really care about them that much. Yeah. If you, you're not you don't get to be called Japanese if you're not. Born if you're not there. born from there, I mean, from you, the like, we, culture. we call anybody Americans as anybody that's an American. Exactly. Canadians anybody who the moves same in. way. Japan is no, you're not Japanese unless you're born there and you're living their lifestyle. And the thing is, is they have that mentality that that we should be striving for, where it's not not the restrictive racial thing. I'm fine for inclusivity, but the thing that they there uh, that we were talking about earlier was uh, something along the lines of. Um, it doesn't matter who you are. Are you good at the job? Can you do it? Are you the best at the job? I want to hire you if you're the best. It doesn't matter what you are or who you are. Yeah, I don't care who you are or who, whatever you are. It's like if you're the best at your job, I don't give a shit. And I don't give a shit if you look like a mongoloid. I don't give a shit if you like 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 the Mona Lisa. Yeah. If you can do the job to the best of your ability and you're the best candidate I can get, no matter what you look like or what you believe in, I'm going to hire you. As long as you're not like someone who's an extremist or somebody that's, that fails your background check. Like, or yeah. you're a terrorist or uh, whatever. doesn't matter. Exactly. As long as you're not a piece the, of the shit, town we live I want to hire you. The town we live in is really uh, really trying to push forward that we have a woman police chief, a woman building inspector, a woman this, a woman that, a woman head librarian, this, that, and whatever. But Why? they don't know jack shit. You, have you ever seen, the, if you ever uh, watch any of the news articles from like any of the shootings or fatalities or... Even the shooting at the mall. You look at the police chief. She just has like a deer in headlights look that she doesn't do jack shit for the whole fucking year. She didn't she pay just, her dues. No. It's like if she if she was there for like, you know, like 10 years. She you know, jumped, she worked she her way up the ranks. She jumped rank. She jumped rank above somebody else who was a male. Yeah. And I he's mean, doing like, everything that she should be doing. She fucks off all day. She literally just doesn't fucking show up to work. Oh, that's something you know she just answers for the, She does fucking answers for emails. I talk to the cops all the time. She doesn't show up or shit. Oh she just answers God. fucking emails all day. That's that's ridiculous. And the uh, deputy chief fucking deals with all the bullshit. He deals with all the shootings. He deals with all the press conferences. He deals with all this, that, what. And she's just a figurehead. She's just a fucking figurehead. That's ridiculous. And somebody that just answers emails and shit. Or so, even then, I the only had the answer. I had the uh, e my email answered, but that could have been a fucking secretary. Who the fuck knows? Just on her email account. Who that's the fuck knows? You know, and it goes to show how much uh, hypocrisy you see in the uh, left-leaning mentality where, you know, you know, don't they talk about Martin Luther King Jr.? And, and didn't he say something like, it, it doesn't matter about the color of your skin, yeah. but the, the, the merit of your character or yeah. something along those lines? Yeah. You know, when are we going to get back to that part where it doesn't matter what you are? I don't think we're going to. I mean, at this point, in the it, life, where this is 2019, we're not going to get back to that point. There's no way in hell of us getting back to that point. Why, w why would the left want to? That's the thing. That That's why uh, people like you and me jumped off the the left. I jump, I'm, I'm on the right a little bit, but, not but as, like, I'm not like far right. I'm not like, oh boy, Donald Trump's running for president again. I, like, yeah, I don't I, believe any. I of that don't shit. want. I don't want 
to be polarized. You know, I just want somebody just, who's fucking sensible. I want to be. I want to be me. I don't want to be a white male. I don't want to be this, that, or whatever. Yeah. I want to be Irish. I want to be an American citizen who is also Irish, who's also German, who just happens to be a white male. I, I don't want to be polarized by that. I don't like to be said, "Oh, he's just white." And not and not any pride comes into that. That's a perfect way of thinking because. When you invoke pride, it invokes blindness. When you're proud to be something, proud to be American, proud to be Irish, proud to be German, proud to be anything, that's why it's one of the seven deadly sins because it blinds us to the actual truth and and ways to challenge our ideals so that we could further philosophically but evolve. You're pr I'm proud of those things, but that's not who I am. I'm an American. Right. There's that at, balance. The end of the, at the end of the day, we are. Uh, if you live in America and you're an American citizen, you are an American. You There's no different. There, you, you're. It, that's what it comes down to. That's what it boils down to in the boil, uh, the melting pot. You are an American. I wouldn't call that pride. I would. I would call that. Uh, you honor the fact yeah. that you you honor your background. You honor your ancestors. I call ancestors. it pride, but I wouldn't be calling it like pride, like from like Full Metal Alchemist pride. Yeah, it's that it's kind like, of asshole bullshit guy. Kid it's just, it's gets blinding. I see it as um, just one of those, um, you know, honor is a word that I would use. I mean, if you're a Nazi, yeah, screw off with your pride. Yeah, yeah. That's, or you're that's not a, good. like a Black Panther or some but, other people that but that's the only kind of, promotes who your people are. That's, that's why pride as a word is a very slippery slope. You know, humbly accepting who you are and your background and what your ancestors have done. You know, you could you could probably put that into the word pride, but you have to dis you have to uh I guess consciously distinct that from pride itself. Here now I'm sounding like a, a PC. No, I don't give a this shit. Is what, I mean, this is what sense. you should be you should this is what you should be saying. The thing is, is I got the biggest like like oh you shouldn't call this country a third world country you should call them a developing developing country how the fuck are they developing if they're decreasing in size and everything else is imploding i mean they're in fucking civil wars how is it fucking developing they're more like destructing they're, they're like destroying their own country but the, look at syria how the fuck are you going to call that third world country a developing country when they're still blowing the fucking buildings up yeah well that's not the point i was getting at but like yeah definitely uh but but the thing, the argument I got in with this with this one person was, uh, it 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 comes off that's actually a racist term, and I don't think so. It's not a racist term. Uh, exactly. How is it a like, racist term? I mean, it doesn't bring out. I don't like say I don't like uh, certain people. Th that's th racist. It's because it it comes off as condescending. It comes yeah condescending, but it's not racist. People are always jumping on the bandwagon. Like, Hey, it's that's racist. You can't say that. It's, and it's not has no race has nothing to do about it. It has absolutely nothing to do about it. And you people always shit on Mississippi for being the stupid bastards of the country, which I mean, they yeah, do maybe have like maybe, maybe it's Alabama. I mean, you guys can fight over it, but who gives a crap? Uh, yeah. yeah, people always <laughs> talk shit about them and saying, "Oh, it's the it's the third world country in the United States," but they don't care about that. But they call it care about you calling like Mexico. I mean, Mexico's not even a third world. I mean, I would say it's a second world. I mean, they're uh, they are built up enough where they have a good tourism base. They have a lot of money going on there. Yes, they have some problems going on, but I wouldn't call it a third world country. It was like I think it was like post World War One or two. I'm not sure which one that where we started coining these terms, and uh, the the anecdotal information that came with this ar article that this person passive aggressively sent to me about why I should call it. A developing country and not a first world country or a second or third world country is because, you know, I there's no you shouldn't call it that because it's racist. That was the only point of the article. Fuck but, that. But doesn't it sound more condescending calling a country a developing country like, oh, they're not caught up to us yet? Or but is it, you know what's more racist is when people say, why, why can't we have why don't we require driver's license when we go to vote? Oh, because black people don't have driver's license. See, now you're the racist that thinks black people can't drive. Yeah, that's How true. How racist yeah. are you? I mean, you're going to be, if you're telling somebody else racist, and you're making a racist remark for what you believe, what your beliefs are, who is the true racist? You don't, I don't believe in like race or color or this, that, or whatever. It's who you are. And deep down, we're all just Americans. We're all trying to get away. We're trying to get, uh, survive life and build a better life for our kids or ourselves. And we just want to retire and have a nice life. But you 
you can't really say, oh, that's racist because black people don't have a driver's license or some of this matter. What I can't say that word because I keep saying that too many times. I almost caught my, I almost said it. What, what word? Is that whatever? I almost said that again. Oh, okay. Oh, shit. You need to stop saying that shit. But well, that's the thing. Yeah, it's... And, and you know, it's it's like, it's kind of like a, a little bit of China is influencing, you know, our whole way of life, our, our whole way of, of, uh, of uh, controlling language. And when you control language, you can control thoughts. And You control news, you can control media, you control the internet, you're controlling the whole population, you're North Korea. Even if it's dark humor, <laughs> even if it's like, uh, you know, face, you have a shit, shitty, book. hateful opinion on something, if you try to restrict and hold in those thoughts, those thoughts don't, they they don't come out. The thing is, is you don't work through those thoughts. And uh, the, the whole, when, when you think about like uh, uh, spiritualism and new age spiritualism and, and meditation and things like that, there comes a time during uh, meditation where you have dark thoughts and by trying to snuff out those dark thoughts, it doesn't, they don't go away. They, they, it, it's kind of like being closeted, like being like a closeted serial killer or being closeted for anything for that matter. You, you keep those thoughts to yourself and it, it bubbles up and bubbles up. And, and before you know it, your biases or your, uh, um, inability to think in, in that way then comes out. Um, and the minute you come out of the closet of whatever you're thinking, whatever your philosophy is, um, it doesn't even matter if it's if it's easily dismantled or any anything like that. You're gonna stick to your guns because you weren't allowed to think that this one thing, and that could have come from school. It could have come from family. It could have come from where you live in the country. I mean, it could who be knows? things like racial bias. It could be things like you know actually being gay. You know, like closeted. Uh, homosexuality and ju and just coming out of the closet like that it could be closeted uh, uh, you know thoughts like I want to kill this person and then you end up killing somebody you know and, and the minute that you don't you, the minute that you try to preserve that energy or you try to hold in that energy in uh, of, of whatever that hateful intent is or whatever that intent is in general it's just it's gonna find its way out. Yeah. As as spiritual beings, it's gonna find its way out because it has to flow like a river, like a stream. You know, if if it gets clogged, the water pressure is gonna build up, and it's it's gonna all come crashing down, and not in a way that people may like. And I feel like that's what happened with Columbine. That's what happened with Sandy Hook. Just a bunch of disrupt disrupted. Uh, people who, who were spiritually imbalanced and nobody really gave them the, the benefit of the doubt or, or gave them a, a reason to think those dark, dark thoughts and get them out of there. And you're always the, the same with the liberals. They're always quick to jump on the bandwagon. Oh, we should ban guns. Guns aren't the issue. It's psychology. I mean, it's the human, it's the human mind that's the real issue. What pushed these uh, crazy wackos to go to this extreme? I mean, if you get rid of guns, what are they going to go to? Chemical weapons, bombs. The, yeah. the two easiest ones to go with. And it's like, look at Houston, or was it Austin or Houston? One of the two cities down in Texas recently, maybe like the last, last two years, like maybe last year, they had a bomber down there. A serial bomber. It was uh, doing it through the mail. And he bombed like maybe, like maybe like four to six people before they eventually caught him. I mean, what's more, what's more distraught to people? People setting bombs out the places. I mean, it took them forever to figure out the Oklahoma City bomber. It took them a good while, but the uh, but you. St I mean, I really. I mean, easy to shoot a stop a uh, shooter is to shoot him. Someone with a good guy to take with a gun can take down a bad guy with a gun. Right. It takes a hell of a lot want more of a team, more investigation. If even if the guy's really good, you might never catch the guy like the Unabomber. Or yeah. somebody does chemical. You're affecting not only the school, you're affecting the first responders, the hospitals, everybody in the hospitals, everybody, everybody in, around you. Everybody around you. If you give, take away guns, I mean, I'm not promoting shootings. I'm not promoting violence. I'm not promoting Nobody any of that. Is. I'm just saying, you take away guns, they're going to figure out the next best thing for them to do their, what they want to do. Yeah. And it's not going to be well. And I, I, I don't like, I mean, sure, we can have, we can have gun reform. I don't care about that. 
Yeah, background it's checks. Like if you can take away people's guns, you get start of a civil war. Right the there. the the way with registration with guns shouldn't you shouldn't have to register. It, well, the thing is, is it's it shouldn't be a paper system. What whatever, like the background checks or whatever the oh, gun it should all be technology. Thing. But the thing yeah. is, with if you have, there should never be a registration of guns, to the simple fact that I don't want anybody else knowing that I have guns. Oh, like out of privacy. Yeah, I don't want no one knowing where I live. Okay. The safe fact. They True. Could, yeah. I looked in the Safe Act. They said any you could do anything you want with the list, uh, with the Safe Act after a certain date. They could post it publicly. They could post it privately. They could keep it secret. They could do whatever the hell they want with the list. I looked into the I read it real well, and it, I didn't like it because I don't, I don't want my name going out there like oh look this guy has guns so he's an easy target, break into his house steal all of his guns shoot him. Yeah, and then loot his stuff. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. And then you have more guns, and now you just keep going and starting the process over again. It's like, I don't, like, most people don't want p- other people knowing how much money they truly have in their bank accounts. Oh, yeah. In the bank. I mean, you don't want most people knowing how much money you have in their wallet, so when you whip out your wallet and someone's standing right next to you, probably go to your side and whip out some dollars if you're like, you don't want most people knowing how much money you have if you have a lot of money. Yeah, and you, you don't want to get robbed. I mean, it's already spot. public information for the money, but. You don't know. You know how much they pay in taxes. You just don't know how much they get paid, or money, how much money they make, or how much money they have saved. It's personal information that shouldn't be leaked out. I mean, for government organizations, police departments, fine, take it. But I don't want it to be fallen into the public hands. I don't want it to be sold into like the private sector. I don't want anybody that. Yeah, you don't want anybody know. to data mine your information yeah. so that you could get I a mean, bunch of spam secu- emails. Nothing is secure. Nothing is secure these days. If you build something, it's secure today. What's to say it's not going to be hacked tomorrow? All that information is gone. That's that's the reason why updates are needed. That's why you still want to have Ethernets instead of Internets. Yeah. Uh, Ethernets are the, probably one of the... I'm, I'm surprised more companies aren't going through this. Wired in the It's a hell of a lot better because if quicker. you have a secured Ethernet... It, for those people that don't understand, Ethernet is a computer system. It's like the Internet, but in a data system. Everybody in the building. That information does not leave the building to go out onto the internet. Yeah, it's, like an internal. Yeah, it's an inter- It's an internal server. Yeah, yeah it's the, like an internal yeah. network. Right? Everything just stays internally. Nothing can go out. And I mean, that's that's probably the best way to have a secure server. I mean, you could you could definitely infect the whole server by, but. I mean, look at what happened to, to Hillary. Well, what, she what, had a private server, or Bill Clinton, I think, had a. I mean, why would you delete 30,000 emails that, and destroy the server by pouring shit over it like bleach? Oh, is that what they did? Yeah, they poured bleach over the server and destroyed it completely. Wow. While she was still on being investigated. That's pretty I mean, suspicious. I yeah. Isn't that... Um, can't, can't you get in trouble for doing something like that? Like messing with an investigation? Yeah. But I don't know nothing that. happened about it. Yeah, well, you don't throw and money And now everybody's all bitching about Trump for being a racist or this, that, whatever. They want his tax returns. I'm like, just shut the fuck up and quit wasting our taxpayer money. Get some of these fucking issues that have been problems for years. The infrastructure, the roads, the fucking bridges. The, all this other fucking issues that make, that need to be fucking addressed. Especially with the 9-11 uh, first responders. That fucking bill that John Stewart was pushing. Fucking vote for that shit. Fight for that shit. Don't fucking fight over this petty bullshit with Trump and that shit. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't really care. It's like, don't, I don't care about it. If he did some shady shit in his past, oh, well, who gives a shit? He's in the position right now. Just fix the freaking government because we're in so much deep shit. We can't be peddling backwards for four years at a time just because somebody, we don't like somebody what they did. And that's the most pettiest bullshit I can think of. The public goods that we have now, I would say, the public goods that we'd have now, what can we do to make them actually usable to this, you know, 21st and show century? Fuck up to work for first. Well, yeah, that's one thing, but you know, I mean, my point is, is like, like you said, building up the roads, fixing the public school system because it's been broken. Oh, before we yeah. start, before we start socializing higher education. Let's fix the public education that we have now. Or instead of having us be supporting other countries, why don't we support ourselves? How can we just su- pull like, back just a little bit? You know, I, what mean, I mean, like we were sending money to Madagascar. We're sending like some odd money. Say we're sending forty eight hundred thousand dollars to Madagascar every year. Really? It's more than that. 
That's what I want. No, I mean, I didn't even know money well, we went send, to We them send them money to other like, random countries. That's stupid. Why the hell are we sending money to them and building our debt bigger? Why don't we just Probably take have the, more U.S. Why don't we just take, why don't we, for one year, take all that money, put it to schools. All that money. Yeah. To schools. See what happens. For like a couple do the years. School, do the schools improve or do they don't? If they don't. A, take some of that money, put it to the roads. See if the roads and bridges improve. If they do, okay. Because we can't help other people if we're not helping ourselves. Because if we can't provide for ourselves, why the hell are we providing for other people? Yeah, e- exactly. Because it's just hurtful on yourself, it harms yourself, and it's toxic. It just needs funding. You know, like, um, I remember in high school I took a sociology course. And the uh, uh, my teacher at the time was talking about, you know, whatever happened to the CCC, the Civilian Conservation Corps. And that's that was like the backbone of uh, of getting out of the Great Depression was basically uh, oh, yeah, getting getting people to work the bridges, the roads, all the infrastructure. You know, it just got people to it work. It built the trade schools so much. Yeah. And you know what? It, going back to the whole university debate topic, you know there there are uh, smaller educational institutions that are going to be, you know, not forty grand a year. You know, it's like a six month vocational thing for engineering, STEM field stuff that uh, are. You need more than six months to do an engineering. But the thing is, it's yeah, like, no, but, but I mean, it's like, like a year or two. It's not it's not a bunch of fluff classes like English comp. Or freshman seminar, yeah, who gives a shit about or like U.S. history, music appreciation. Fuck that. Just get all the major stuff. Yeah, for I like music. I get it. But it's like get, you know? get all of the major classes done with, and then go out there and take an internship instead of doing all this other shit. That's what it is. It's like get your hands dirty, get on the internship, and that's what this uh, a couple of uh, local areas uh, are starting to do, and they they actually have a path to getting engineering jobs without breaking the bank. Without having to go into debt until you're 50, basically. I mean, there wasn't college for engineers before. Like, back in, like, a little while ago, they used to just go. You, you went to school for a little bit, but you didn't have to go for four years. You'd do internships. You'd be an apprentice for so long. And then you'd become a master. Yeah, I think they do that with uh, electricity. They, yeah, do, they that do that with plumbing. The, they do that with plumbing. Contracting. Contractors. They do that with the... Uh, tell us that other one. Lumber. Um, What's another word for lumber? Woodworkers union. Woodworkers. Okay, I didn't know. Or welding, probably too. Yeah. You know, just all all these like uh, handy things that you know may very well be replaced by automation in like maybe a couple decades. I can't but doubt it. I mean, you can't really build a house with robots, can you? You can. They have uh, cement three D printers. I mean, no, no, that, no, no, no. Where no, the ink no. is three like D printed. Actual houses with robots, like houses like the ones that are being built today. Who the hell wants to live in a freaking three D printed house? But it's not it's not plastic filament. It's like actual cement that yeah, they're no. using as the ink. I would. You still I mean, have to have people put it in flooring. Yeah, that's true. You need you drywall, need... drywall, molding, painting. Yeah, you still, like, that's just, more like electric, interior electrical just... work. Yeah, you'd have to have people yeah, build all that. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, we already use robots to build houses anyway. I mean, we use uh, cement trucks to pour in the concrete. And we just fill in the uh, the basements. Yeah, you make a good point. You know where where it comes to like uh, trade schools or trade nitty gritty. You know wiring things properly. You know it's, it's going to take a while for artificial intelligence to actually get to that point where they could, you know, uh, run the necessary power as efficiently as po- possible and do it better than an electrician of some kind of running plumbing because every house is going to be different unless if they're the same cookie cutter houses. That are uh, within the same uh, programming. Who wants to do that? I mean, I don't. I hate cookie cutter me. houses. They just look ugly. I mean, why? I would like to be different. I don't want to be. I don't want to be a gray blob with all of the gray blobs. I want to be different. I think everybody wants to be different. I don't think anybody wants to be a cookie cutter of a person. You want to be who you are. Yeah, I. I mean, like I. I would just want to do what I would want to do. I mean, yeah, not see? even like. I wouldn't even sink my identity into something like a house. It's just a house. It's somewhere to crash every night, get some food, take a couple shits. I'm not saying like painting the house pink. I'm just saying. Oh, okay. You want to build the house you want to build if you're going to build a house. Yeah, that's why I hate gated communities with all their 
strict rules where you need grass, even Fuck though those. yeah. I mean, homeowners associations are just another, that's a big thing in Florida. It's just another thing to be a Nazi. You get three. You get. I mean, some homeowners associations are nice. You get three assholes in a homeowners association. There goes the whole fucking neighborhood. You know, you get in trouble if you paint your house a different color. Yeah, I know. There's different shade of like tan. That. Or you, you have to get permission to fucking paint your door. There's some houses like that. There's some areas with our town with that. One of my just, friends lives in that area. I uh, think I think Americans should team up and like conquer those areas. Just storm the castles on those people. Just bomb fuck those up their day. people. Those guys are gonna like. No, I wouldn't bomb them. But come on, get your own individuality together. Get your shit together. I want to get a make an earth bag house where you just what it's like a um mixing clay and like 70 percent clay 30 percent sand into bags and you just roll out a bunch of bags and it you, you make like this type of dome looking thing and the, the there's a way to set up where you could actually put in three floors if you if you get the engineering right the problem is is i don't understand that much about i don't know but yeah I, I went up to calculus i said fuck calculus i dropped out of that so I'm yeah, not really it's good too uh, it's too intense for for someone like. We me also as have well. the zoning permission. You also it also could be right for this environment. It could be wrong for another one. So just because somebody built something somewhere doesn't mean it could be right. I mean that's why you have so many different like uh, code enforcement. You have this that ACM is coming stuff. You have everything else that compiles into one. Right. Well, actually, in a, to prevent fuck ups from happening. If it's a dome. You might be better off building it. You you would actually be better off building it in a place like Florida or some place that's prone to hurricanes because of the way it's aerodynamically yeah formed. It won't you but, know it's not like some square or triangular but even here structure. It's like you might have a problem with snow. Oh yeah, definitely. The weight of the snow will cave in the ceiling, and that's the issue. But but you know why don't why wouldn't you just reinforce that with other wooden Two beams? Two by fours. Yeah, but then again. It's I would I wouldn't trust it. Really? Fucking uh, snow fucks up everything. Yeah. I mean, out in Buffalo, in New York, you have to have uh, steel I beams across your ceiling. You have to have so many. Uh, you have to have enough weight or reinforcement on the roof to hold up like eight feet of snow, ten feet of snow. I'd probably do that. You know, I I mean, like the thing is, is it's it's a shot in the bucket for like steel beams. The Let's thing is, is you're just paying for clay and sand, or or you're just looking for clay and sand and just filling up bags full of it. You know that's a lot cheaper than getting a bunch of lumber, and doing it that way. You also have in uh, Florida, they have to have shingles that are rated for hurricanes. The houses are ready for hurricanes because if you didn't have shingles ready for hurricanes, you'd have projectiles, literally like fragments of projectiles from like the shingles breaking in the air, oh. flying oh, yeah. through the air at high speeds, going into things. Like sixty mile an hour. Yeah, winds. like needles going through buildings like that. I mean, like that's not cool. That's not. I mean, that's why you have no. to have. That's why you have to have codes like, and stuff. I guess like. that's why regulations a a big thing. But other than that, you know. Yeah, keep people from dying. Keep people from fucking over everybody else. Keep people from killing each other. I don't care if it's pink. I really don't give a shit if anything is pink. You know, like I, I feel. If like, I have a problem with it, I'm gonna call you an asshole, and that's gonna be it. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I brought up that at my homeowners get association this. meeting. I'm like, honest to God, if somebody paints their house pink or puts, like, a giant... Or, like, one of the... Uh, somebody I know bought a uh, a giant rooster on a pole from Harbor Freight. And he said, it's my giant cock. He <laughs> put it in his front yard. <laughs> and, uh... See, it's like, if I had something like that, I'd put it in my fucking front yard. <laughs> but then again, my neighborhood association would probably get pissed off at me, but fuck it, they can suck my giant fat cock. There you go. Yeah. There you go. You can suck my cock. It's out <laughs> in the front. And put a sign on it that says, suck here. <laughs> yeah, they'll they'll definitely approve that right, yeah, right at the end like, of the... Fuck everybody. I mean, it's like if you just wanted to watch the world burn I by like doing that. stupid shit by bending the rules like some of these other people do. I like... Uh, It would be nice to, like, you know, I, I don't know, not even just bend the system to you, to your will. Just, like, have it be good and flexible enough so that you're not in in a socialist country, you know, that's, like, or a fascist country. 
that's just overtaking every you, thing that you want to express. I don't think socialism is the way to go either. I don't know if it look is. At, yeah. Look at Venezuela. I mean, they were socialists for a while. And you get people saying, that's not socialism, then what the fuck is? I mean, like you say, that's not that's not true communism. Show me what the fuck it is. Give me an example. Because all communism and all socialism, uh, by solely on itself, has failed. The, the issue is that when you get the hyper-collegiate types that are 100% sheltered by this university indoctrination, um, they, they uh, go nitty-gritty with the, uh, um, the vocab. You know, that's, that's socialism with the lowercase s. That's socialism with the capital S. It's like, it, it's, why can't we look, instead of getting into the vocab of it, and all and all the the nitty gritty word bullshit that goes with uh, socialism versus communism. Um, let's talk about how socialism can be seen as a slippery slope to things like communism. It's a gateway to if communism. If we're not if we're not careful, if we're not careful, it is know? the gateway to communism because it's like if I'm doing A, B, and C right now and getting paid say forty thousand dollars a year. Why would I do A, B, and C to next year and get paid twenty thousand dollars when everybody's getting paid do it to, uh, to do what their jobs are? They're getting paid twenty thousand dollars. Why the fuck would somebody go to be a doctor? Why the fuck would somebody want a further education? Why the fuck would somebody want to put their time out there to help out other people to get, make a couple extra bucks? But then again, you don't get the extra couple extra bucks. We're all just gonna be lazy. I yeah. mean, that's everything. That's, that's everybody's point and aspect. If you're getting everything for a lot, even though every, conservatives see this with like food stamps and public housing, if you're getting everything provided in life for free, what are, what's going to make you want to change? I mean, the, for a human, like for me, it's hard for me to get out of a rut. I mean, you get into a rut, it takes like 20, it takes like 30 days to get out of your you, rut. You, you watch you like a, an entire season on Netflix of a certain show or anime or anything. Yeah. And and you just get to that that feels like your full time job where you're just an expert on, you know, Netflix basically. And yep. you don't really apply yourself to anything that's applicable to the real world. You know. And that feels like a full time job where then you go back to the real world working a full time job and it's like, man, I really wish I was on my couch. Yeah, and then you like uh why would you want to even go any further than that? Like, if even with like generations, like if people were saying, like, I, I've done all, I've done housing inspections, I've done the fire alarm and sprinkler there, you do so much of it, you start realizing some of these stereotypes might actually be true. I mean, I was doing housing inspections in prominently black areas, and it's in the middle of the day, in the middle of the week, in a in the fall time, and there's kids at home. Sleeping, playing video games at home. Jeez. And it makes you wonder, it's like, what the fuck are they thinking? What the hell is going through the parents' minds? It's like, as soon as, if I was that age, I'd send my kids to school. But There's if you something. get brought up in generation and generation and generation of public assistance, what the fuck's going to make you want to succeed in life if you're getting everything for free or subsidized? Yeah, I mean, what the fuck's the point? It has to be a very good reason to be subsidized. I think I think that's not because you know when you when you get into the topic of socialism, then you say, you know, well, we were talking about uh, uh, public goods like infrastructure or roads, you know, uh, you know, like roads, bridges, buildings, and uh, um, you know, like uh, um, firefighting, EMTs, yeah, law enforcement. Those are all in in by definition they're all socialist because it's it's funded by everybody else everybody yeah. else and you know so socialism but it not, not only benefits that person it benefits everyone exactly exactly which is why i don't think um certain form certain elements of education shouldn't be um shouldn't be socialist especially like a uh, public education or sorry uh uh Private universities should not be sus subsidized by the government solely because it's not a – it shouldn't be – I don't want to subsidize some kind of uh, country club yeah. setting for the sake of, quote-unquote, education or enriching somebody's lives. The Internet is accessible. The knowledge is there. 
the libraries are public. You just have to be motivated en enough to and, and entrepreneurial enough in your mentality in order to master something that you want to master. And if you need the internship or apprenticeship, you'll go and do it. The thing is, is that's not being influenced or that's not being uh, uh, noted as something that's that's valid or something that um, people would want to uh, um, respect, you know, the entrepreneurial yeah. mentality. The It's now gotten into more populism where we have to conform we have to go do what everybody else is doing, keep up with the Joneses, and go to these uh, private institutions in order in order to be somewhat relevant in society, or else you're seen as a degen degenerate kid yeah. who didn't go to school and they're uneducated. But that's not the case. It, it's just you also have another thing in social free thinker. When you uh, when you were growing up, they told you not feeding the wildlife because they'll become dependent on you. That's what socialism is. Yeah. You provide somebody with everything in their life. Why the hell are they gonna? Why the hell would they stop when you stop giving it to them? How the hell are they gonna figure out to get food themselves? Yeah, but one can argue that we're not animals. That's why I said wildlife. I didn't say animals. Yeah, because I don't want to have that stereotype saying, "Oh, we call black people animals," or "We call Asian people animals." Yeah, I mean, I say wildlife in general. You don't feed geese. You don't feed. You don't make make them dependent on something. Right. Because if they get dependent on it. And they grow up with that, they're not going to know any life different. I mean, you're going to have to keep doing it until the day they die. Yeah, we have that with, like, domesticated pets. You know, like how, like uh, uh, dogs, cats, Yeah, rabbits. but those are pets. Well, that, that's the thing, though, that, like, we've... we've uh, Those are in your family. You generally... Take care, you take care of your family, don't you? No, yeah, exactly, exactly. But if uh, wild animals, you don't take care of, like, say, there's a deer in my backyard. I don't feed it, like, licorice every day. Or there's like a bobcat or like a rabbit in my backyard. I don't throw down lettuce every day because you're just gonna keep coming back for the lettuce. Exactly, and their their whole I mean, ecosystem. That's gonna the thing rely with socialism. It. It's like if you keep handing people things for free, it's gonna be an expectation. Rather it's gonna than be an a, expectation rather than a reward. Rather than gratitude. A gra gratitude or reward. I mean, like if yeah. I work, I'm rewarded with or I'm rewarded with a paycheck. Yeah, and that and that feels good. You, it you feels also good. feel like I mean, you're com contributing. But if I just don't do jack shit all day and sit at home, total my thumbs like some of these people think our generation does. Yeah, then they, they expect us to get a paycheck, which doesn't really happen. I mean, we all work as hard as we can. We all do different things for work. No, nobody. I don't think anybody wants to be a bum. It just happens. It just happens. You know, and it and I think it happens to all of us. I mean, some people that have been married and working their whole life. They get to a point where they're just like, fuck it. Yeah, I think there needs to be more programs that's designed for kind of like a design, like a rehab facility where it's, you know, you're not stigmatized for being a bum. It's just a way to get you back into society. Yeah, they have that in New York State. They, have they it, do uh, have that? Yeah, they do. It's called like Vestor Access VR. They also have work okay. programs for people that get fired and stuff too. Oh, that's pretty cool. I People mean, that have been laid off. The more you know. Yeah. There's those around, so. And that's that's the thing, though, with the, with the evolving technology and things um, things pertaining to, um, you know, the, like automation taking over, um, you know, it, that's the biggest concern is, like, when are we going to, you know, people are going to be laid off by the lot, and what are we going to consider a job? And and then there's the whole conversation about universal basic income, which scares me now. But maybe in like a couple decades, if automation if automation takes over, we'll have that safety net of okay. Now we now that they're doing all the hard stuff, we could do more creative things. We could start talking about you know, and that's way 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 into the future. And I don't know if uh, enough people are ready for that. So if I, as I see it, the thing is, universal health care. I have these pieces of paper. You used to make one piece of paper every day, or every right. every once in a while. Mm -hmm. Automation took over. So you're not getting a paycheck anymore, so I'm taking that money. Why would I hand, why would the business owner who takes the extra money they get rid of the position hand that back over to the government to pay for that job? You know what he would do? 
move the country over, move the job overseas where he doesn't have to pay that uh, shit. Yeah. And, and then what you do, you know what you do? Charge import tax. I mean, people are all scared of these tariffs and stuff. Tariffs are probably the best thing. Sure, it increases the prices. Sure, it makes things more expensive. But it promotes American-made goods. It yeah. promotes American-made vehicles. I mean, every all the vehicles in this state or in this country are made in America. The the uh, idealistic excuse for um, you know, for not for for wanting to be more globalist is that oh, I'm a worldly person. I don't see myself as a citizen of a specific country i see myself uh, as a citizen of the world right you know like that's that's oh, like the those argument. people like go around saying look i'm uh what the hell is it called they uh uh what i'm they always quote like uh they say i'm on what the hell is that word they uh, uh they, they always have fake license plate i'm not driving i'm traveling oh i don't know i can't think of that word right now like bumper stickers no, 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 no. Like, they get rid of their license plate. They put a piece of paper on it. Um, oh, really? I didn't even know that they had that. Like, decals? That no, go no, your... no. These are fake people that are making fake things. Oh, okay. Yeah, I have no idea what you're talking about. I'll figure it out in a second. But, um, yeah, it goes... The excuse of... Um, the, I mean, it's, it's a weak argument. Seeing myself as a, a citizen of the world... Yeah, that sounds nice. That's very idealistic. But the thing is, is we get into these tribal states. And uh, the thing the thing I see about uh, minorities that are, are indoctrinated and, and believe and buy into the rhetoric that the left has presented um, about, you know, how white people are evil, they become the bigots that they hated, that they hate. I mean, it comes down to the uh, fact of uh, Dr. Seuss was right with uh, Green Star Snitches. I don't remember Just watch that, that video. I mean, everybody was walking around. I mean, there was two different classes. There's people that had the green stars on their uh, stars on their chest. They were proud because they had green stars, and there was people that didn't have them. And the people that had green stars wouldn't hang out with the people that didn't have stars. And the people without stars, they're like, what the hell? Why don't you want to hang out with us? Why do you think you're so better than us? And then somebody came into town uh, and was able to give people that didn't have stars in their chest stars in their chests. But then they had to go through all these no, they trials. Had give, no, they had, no, 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 no. They gave them like five bucks and they go through a machine and they come back out with a star in their chest. And now everybody's confused and the people with the stars in their chest are saying, oh, I'm not different. I'm the same as this person. So they get their stars removed off their chest. And it just becomes a vicious cycle of someone getting money while all these people are just getting stars and not stars. And at the end when everybody runs out of money, they don't know who's who. And it comes down to the fact that Dr. Seuss was right. In the end, we're all just human beings. We're all just Americans. We're all this. We're not black. We're not white. We're not Asian. We're human beings. And that's the way we should treat each other. And it was sovereign citizen when I was thinking of. Sovereign citizen. Yeah. Watch those videos. They think they're like above the law. They call police road pirates. Yeah. I mean, there are a lot of people who say that the police are just one big gang subsidized by the state and federal governments. But, yeah, but it's like, you know, for the most people, they don't have guns to protect themselves. So when someone's robbing their house or trying to rape them, they call police. But it's like if people have guns. It's like, shit, you are the law. Yeah. But you got to be respectful of it. Most people are respectful of it. Most people just don't go out ruin two and cowboy shooting and everything. Yeah, it's not the Wild West. Oh, the, no, no, it's not. Nobody's like that. I mean, you sure you get crazy people like that, but fuck those guys. Those guys are crazy. I mean, that's with everybody. Everybody has crazies. There's, especially yeah. in Florida. Florida really, yeah, Florida. Florida really brings out the crazy. I'm really people. hesitant it, about moving. Is there something in the fucking water down there, or is it just like the fucking climate? It could be. It could be the fact that or the education are, system is just fucked. Could be the education system. Could be the water supply not as good as up here. You know, um, not as pure. You know. Um, you know, it, it's probably a, a combination of things. The the rebel in, um, like bootleggers, in in uh, Daytona actually, Daytona Beach, Florida, when they did drag racing, that came from the bootlegger era, during yeah. Prohibition times, and they actually suited up their ve- vehicles to run out the uh, outrun the cops. And then they got into racing because of it. They got yeah, that's where the Daytona 500 first came from, and. Uh, 
And I think that that rebel spirit or that that above I'm above the law mentality kind of forked off into, you know, like that whole uh, prohibition, anti-prohibition yeah. thing kind of forked off into just being like a, a risk taking asshole versus, you know, Daytona 500 or something like that. But, uh, you know. Before we get into that tangent, we should probably wrap yeah, up. Yeah, I got work in the morning. Oh, uh, god damn. Uh, yeah, 7 a.m. is going to come up quick. Well, it's been a pleasure and talking to you, sir. we started about Pokemon, and we went through a whole bunch of other bullshit. I thought we were just going to talk about Pokemon so, this whole time. Yeah, and I kind of sidetracked everybody. Yeah, it's uh, it's not going to... Maybe no. we'll talk about Pokemon next time. Uh, yeah, maybe. I'd say, uh, you know, leave in the comments section what you guys would want to hear uh next you know if you w want us to talk more about pokemon sword and shield and things pertaining to that that's awesome if you want to get more into the political stuff i try not to be as much of a political station but you know there's it, enough of those as it is there's enough of those as, as it is i kind of want to want to keep it light but you know this is our first uh recording of things so uh just uh, see how it goes see how it goes yeah maybe next sunday maybe the sunday after that i don't know yeah or maybe Something another like day of the week. I don't know. Could be a uh, Tuesday. A Tuesday, maybe. Monday. Yeah, it'd be Monday. Probably going to post this on Monday. Probably post this on tomorrow. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, all right. Or next Monday. I don't know. Or next <laughs> Monday. Yeah, whenever. <laughs> it's depending on how long it takes to upload because this is a pretty long video. Going to be yeah. one of my longest videos, actually. It's but going to uh, take you about a day. Probably. You should with, probably stop talking. With with my day. uploading speed, yeah. <laughs> all right, well. <laughs> Good uh good talking to you man yeah. and uh yeah I'll see you see you later have a good shift tomorrow Yeah well